this. Fuck this, Fuck Mr. You, White. Fuck you, Mr. Trump. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Cheeto head. So, welcome, welcome, welcome to F This, another lovely episode. I believe it is episode number 999. How the fuck are you? Good. 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 <laughs> hey, so crickets. We need crickets. On, we need crickets. So I'm finding. That sounded a little, uh, yeah. So that was you want guys to do it again? Our brains were all on lag at the moment. No, so, uh, it's because you went into it. I hope, All right. Uh, everybody can see us. Can uh, we get a count in the chat room? Drop the uh, meeting info in the chat room with that little note. If okay. you can. Okay. And uh, we will carry on with uh, how the fuck are you? How the fuck are you? So, well, right? yeah, this is F This, and I'm yes. Duff. I'm Shantae. I'm Emilio. I'm Sarah. And I'm your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Me. Welcome. Me. Only sometimes. <laughs> Only on the good nights. So we, we want to save the ID and then throw it in there also? Yeah, let's let's drop the ID password into the thing so that the people can come in the thing and say things. Okay, so um, what do we need to announce that when it's time for callers? There, I drop the ID, I drop the password, so whenever yeah. it happens, it happens. Yeah. If you're supposed to be telling stories to us tonight, grab that info, yes. jump on. And if I don't recognize you, you ain't getting in. <laughs> All right. So, so, make, so make sure you smell good. That's right. Wash, <laughs> yes. them watch, them gonna, wash them titties. Wash them titties. Wash them titties. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. There's a naked chow. Uh, yeah. Half naked. <laughs> Talk to me. Half to get me. it. Get it right. Talk to me, guys. <laughs> How, how's everybody doing? How you guys doing? How was your week? Oh, what a week it was. How is no wait? It's been longer than a week. How, 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 oh, I thought you were just genuinely asking about just this week. Well, we can't get to that. But how's it been? How's it going? What What's new? Guess where we are. Guess where we are. What's Ooh. new with you? Oh, studio. We've got some new digs here. We moved our uh, podcast uh, set up to um, to Shantae and Duff's new place in the basement. We're in the basement. We're in the fungin. We created a podcast cave. There's That's even right. a, a casting couch there, too. There really so is. And you know what? We'll post a picture of it. Yeah. And, um, What's up, everybody? I think we should, like, share pictures of uh, of Neil on it so yeah. you guys can see. All right. You're yeah. getting all your snorties So if on you're interested, here. you'd be able to, you know, get courted by uh, everybody here. I think you yeah. should wear a denim skirt, brown Uggs, <laughs> and a pink tank top. Woo woo. Why not? We'll put butterfly clips in your hair, too. That's very there specific. So 90s. Don't forget your push-up Bravo. Ooh. I'll try not to. Forget it. <laughs> very important. Accessorize, bitch. Yes, that's right. <laughs> so, uh, Neil, how about you start? Yes. All right. How the fuck are you? Um, pretty great. I mean, got a bit of Share extended time. hours at work okay. again, so um, somewhat going back to normal in that regard. Uh, but it's been all right so far. Can't all complain right. much. Nice. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. How about you guys? We've just been getting to work. Yeah. We, we moved, uh, and so we, like, hit the ground running. Yeah. We uh, we are currently working on our pop-up uh, location, where we'll be out of that place, uh, in that uh, location for... <laughs> For a couple of days a week. Yeah. And, and for those of you guys who don't know, what we're talking about where we are like the cake folks in the area. Yeah. Num Num's Cakery is Best. well known in our area now, and um, we've got lots of friends everywhere, and all of our friends are kind of wanting to get involved. And what I mean is um, the food trucks, the local businesses, and um, currently what Chris was talking about our our pop up location. So we're getting uh, lots of stuff legalized for Kitimat. We've been doing terrace forever, but now we're doing Kitimat. So we're, we're making it happen, making moves. You guys are too big to operate out of your home now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, way too crazy for that ruckus. Yeah, we're no longer a cottage no business. We're not a cottage bakery. We're, we're a, a town home bakery. <laughs> I mean, there's lots of there's lots of other cake folks and stuff, but we're we're doing it big time now. Lots of good stuff coming on. 2020. 
Well, I guess you know why. It's because we've had all this time. We've been stuck inside. Our brains got too big and happy. <laughs> One of the brighter spots of 2020. Yeah. Right? yeah. The only bright spot. <laughs> Our business didn't stop. It just went crazier. That's right. People right. like some sweetness during this shit to have. How the fuck are you, Malcolm? How yes. about you? Oh, this is true. I'm uh, good. Yeah. I've pretty much been with you guys the whole time. So <laughs> whatever they said, same goes for me. If he's not <laughs> with him. Or like, why are you with us? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then they send a search party out for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Consists of other people to uh, drag you back uh, over here. Yeah, it's about the same for me. I'm still, I still refuse to go out into the world as though there's no virus out there. I'm playing it safe still. Because why not, right? Yeah. I'm not sending my kids to school yet. So, um, and also, I'm still doing knee rehabilitation. I don't know if I mentioned it on here yet, but I think I did already. Yeah. I replaced my knee. I got a new knee, titanium knee, and I'm rehabilitating now. So. He, I feel, I feel jealous because he's the first bionic guy at the table right now. <laughs> I, my heart is robotic. I am the $600 man. <laughs> Sorry, that was really loud. <laughs> Still a worthless man. At least you're six. Oh, natural. That's right. <laughs> I only have human parts. That's how lame I am. <laughs> he's, the, he's the only cyborg here. Exactly. <laughs> Robo cop, but not cop. He's the robo civilian. One sixteenth robot. That's right. So Sarah, how about you? Tell us about yourself. Tell us about oh. you. Oh, <laughs> me. Um. Yeah. Wow. So, like, the United States is going crazy. I don't know <laughs> how else to explain it. Um. Wow. Even just this past week with all of the riots and um the fuck even the court case um against the cops that killed George. It's just, it's been, I mean, it's had its scary moments for sure. Um, I guess because it's just so widespread, but it's interesting seeing the entire world come in and get, uh, with the program, keep up with the whole scenario. So, I mean, honestly, it's just been batshit crazy. That's the only way I think I can explain it. Other than that, um, okay. Me personally, I'm, I'm okay. (laughs) Can't complain. Good. Excellent. Excellent. That's Excellent. good news. I like that. Good on ya. Good on ya. All right. That's so a pretty good segue into obviously what we're going to talk about. Yeah. And it's hard to avoid talking avoid talking about it because it's quite literally everywhere. Yes. It's everywhere. All of our minds and in our hearts currently, and it's kind of hard not to bring it up or talk about it. You really try to go through a day and just be like, okay, happy thoughts. And then it's just, it's there. It's bombardment, you know? Yeah. It's in the back of your mind always because everything just kind of directs that way. I mean, any, thing that you see on TV, um, you know, if, if there's a, a commercial and there's like a cop in the commercial, you're like, oh, fuck. Or if there's a, a person of color, you're like, oh, man, like, it's, I think it's just everywhere. That's definitely true. Like, no matter where we go, what we see, I always think about that. Like, I think about my, my friends who are cops are in there, too, and I think about their safety, and I think about all my friends of color, all the colors, you know, I think about what- the rainbow. So if you all haven't figured it out yet, we're talking about Black Lives Matter. Yes. And they do, in fact, matter. That's right. And if you're down with every, anything else, fuck you. <laughs> it's just, you can't have the bigots anymore. Like, having been born in the South and raised by, well, not raised because he was a fuckhead, but my dad... Uh, was from the South. I grew up around a lot of people who had um, very racist views, bigots and the like. So this for me is groundbreaking, revolutionary even. I have some cousins that are actually in Alabama um, right now that we just kind of rekindled the family. A lot of stuff happened with, you know, 
my sperm donor, but that's neither here nor there. So being raised in a family, not really a family because my family's not that way, but my dad was raised that way. His dad was raised that way. So it's this whole shit snowball that I'm hoping just kind of falls off, you know, um, not fall off because we really can't forget what happened because if we forget what's happened, history is bound to repeat itself. So yes, exactly. It's like a fucking Twilight Zone situation. I feel like we've like time traveled. It's it's crazy. It's so crazy. But it's necessary. I think hopefully we will come out of this a stronger race as humans. Um, we will value our neighbors, our spouses, our children a little more, even with, it it almost feels like it's fate with the coronavirus and everybody having to stay at home with their families and their children. You learn to respect your family more, especially the teachers out there, us parents who had to do, you know, homeschooling, that shit sucked. Um, having, you know, even not even being able to see you guys up until, you know, recently, um, not being able to, to make it out there. It was just, I couldn't imagine. People were separated from their children in in different countries because the whole world shut down. And then now you have this movement that really shouldn't be revolutionary, but it is. It is, it's a huge thing. I can feel the world changing, but it's almost like... Sarah, turn into a robot. is spazzing and eating out of it. Having an orgasm. Bigger. I cannot hear you. There we go. There we go. Okay, there it goes. We got her back. It's our God, you guys, I was being all deep and stuff. Fuck you. <laughs> what, I, what, I was telling, uh, what I was telling Neil, like, right before the episode was that, um, like, all the feelings and all the, the peaceful protests and all the people standing up together, um, like, it, it makes my heart feel so full. Like, I don't think I've got a day without crying about something just because it makes me feel so happy to see people come together. And I was telling him the reason why I think it's so crazy and amazing is that the world is such a small place now. Yeah. Like it, seeing the other countries stand up and protest and follow the Black Lives Matter situation together, no matter who you are, is that's that's pretty damn amazing, you know? I agree. And I feel like if we would have had, you know, all the – the ways of communicating we did in 92 when these things were happening before oh, and yeah. in the 50s and the 60s and all that, maybe things would be different now. Who knows, right? You know, because we, we can talk, we can see each other, we can voice and see all these issues that are going around, uh, you know, around us. I think it's so of, easier now. I think it's mm-hmm. because of the, uh, the accessibility. Exactly. Uh, it, we, it's become a little bit more prevalent and in our face. And there's proof, right? We can't, yeah. there's no, like the cops were saying stuff about it. people falling down, you know? And then it's like, we have video of yeah. you knocking that person down. It's the proof, like saying that, oh, it was a mistake for this. Yeah, but this, this, and this led up to that. We we watched it happen. And it's the- You've literally watched it happen. It was a very emotional video. Like, I have proof. You guys are full of shit. Left and right, just to I protect think- yourselves. And no one can protect themselves anymore. And, and I don't know, we were having a discussion on the, on the drive over here earlier, and we were, we were talking about how when uh, uh, law enforcement is going to, you know, do their duty, that they need to have a body cam on 100% of the time. while. Yes. On, mm-hmm. yeah. And then if at any point in time that cam is turned off for no just reason, they are instantly fired. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I agree. There should be no tolerance policy because yeah. if your cam's off, there's no reason. If you were being a police officer that is, I don't want to say law abiding because they are kind of the law, but are just you're doing your damn job, they're then not, they, they aren't the law and they're not above the law. All they do no, is absolutely not. To, you know, protect and serve. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's, that's it. The law, the, the law, they need to abide by the laws as well. Yeah. yeah. So that th- that's the whole idea behind that is having it, uh, policing the police. Mm-hmm. And instead of having it just being recorded so you can see view it later, uh, Malcolm was saying that it should do stream. 
Oh, yeah. I was going to say live stream. That's a wonderful idea. The video shouldn't be saved locally or anywhere. It should go straight to the cloud exactly. and be accessible yeah. to the public. Perfect. To the public. Yes, yeah. perfect. We need to and watch it. these guys like hawks. And and right now, since we don't have that readily available, if you if you're traveling with people and you get pulled over, your your the people in your vehicle, like let's say your passenger, should pull out their phone and record what's going on. You know, just to just just cause. Just because. What I've seen too is most people have those dash cams. Yeah. Like if you're in an accident, there you have proof of the accident, how it went down, all that. And now most people, um, black, Mexican, you know, what have you, they have cameras. They whip their camera people out. Have gone. I think that it's like they don't feel afraid anymore. And almost, it's almost empowering this technology. Like yeah. now this person, and if you see it, it's almost like it. it bloom slowly like a flower like oh there's one or two things here people getting just grainy video and then as our technology progresses and video cameras or phone cameras have better um optical and, and audio on them then you're able to make out more about the person what happened that recent video with george was there's zero doubt about it and yeah. they they yelled to get off of him he he's talking to you um, I think a lot of the anger uh, that stemmed from all of that was already there, but now it's blown up. But the entire world has come together to say, no, fuck this. This has to stop. And that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I was, when Shanta and I were discussing earlier, I mentioned too, like, I think because we're in a pandemic, because so much more people are at home and on social media that they're seeing these horrific things going on and a lot more people are getting upset like i mean if we look back at like the ferguson uh protests and everything like you know that sort of like came there was anger and then it just like went away yeah like, there wasn't any change or even justice that came out of it. So That's like, exactly because why. so much more people I think are at home or not, or at least not preoccupied with anything else because of the pandemic, right. that they have no other choice but to be upset. True, very true. They are not preoccupied. I mean, a lot of people are still working or they have their kids, but I think, I hate to say the new norm again, that we've all kind of settled into this kind of, just this numbness you know, we're all kind of just over it. And so you're exactly right, Neil. That's a really good observation. I hadn't even thought of that. It's in your face. You can't get away from it. You have nothing else to do. Like, <laughs> and like, I, I, I hope that like, we don't, we don't, we as a society don't settle for what's been brought to, a, what's been brought to us right now. Like it took so long for them to convict the four officers. Like it, Gosh, it took the president so long to even mention anything, and even then he didn't really address the issue. Right. And it, I mean, I think the same day or even the day afterwards, Obama came out and said something. It's like, cool, these are great things, but, like, we need to see more change. We can't get distracted by that. We can't. Yeah. We need action. We need to keep going forward to bring about more changes. And, and it's not just about voting either. It's yeah. the, um, the, it's an evolution it's destruction. of change and confidence in people who are creating laws and making movements so that there's standards in, in place, that there's laws in place that protect everybody. And that, you know, the status behind the people who become law enforcement, the people who become politicians, there's, you know, there's standards and there's things that you have to be and follow to be able to be in that place of, what is it? Position. Position, you know what I mean? Over other people or what have you. So once we start making those moves and putting things in place, then obviously that's going to be more of a, I don't know. Catalyst of change. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We have to build I, yeah. that. That's the next step. Because at this, this point, this past week, my thing I kept saying was, how do we even get out of this? Yeah. What is next? How, how do we move on from this? And I, it's I, that. Like, like, you know, everybody's always talking about like the looters and the rioters and, and you know, the uproar of this situation, but you have to understand this is the buildup of anger. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is the buildup of rage that's happening and this needs to happen. Yep. It's like a grieving process. Yes. And we have to go through the whole fucking process. Absolutely. And if that means burning shit to the ground to rebuild it, 
then we should fucking do it. I can't exactly agree with you there, man. Like these are businesses that people have brought. I mean, some of these businesses were even black owned. I mean, you, to me personally, I have nothing against, you know, your views, but my views as it stands is you don't need to ruin your community you need to pull them closer, become a stronger community with your neighbors and even your far away neighbors, just the anger I get that is there. There is no right way to pro protest. There's no wrong way. Personally, I just don't agree with stealing in an innocent person's name in the name of his death. I don't agree about that. I think that peaceful protests, like what happened today in Terrace, what happened at my mom's house in California. Like the thing is you can protest. You can get your words out there and say, I'm angry. This is what's happening. Okay. You can do all that. And it shows that everyone's united in that way. Um, the people that are breaking into businesses and destroying things, those people are not protesters. Those people no. are workers, and no. those people are criminals. Yes. And most of those people, whether you like it or not, who came from other places here and there, and some of them were even paid to do this. See. Yeah, that's the part that gets me. These pallets showing up with pallets of bricks in fucking parking lots. To me, that was like... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, well, what? It's like they were preparing. It's real life that this stuff is, it's put there on, you know, on a stage to make this look and be worse than it is. And yeah, people are angry, you guys, and people let things on fire. But you know what? The people that are destroying these monuments for these historical people who were slave owners and all that stuff, mm -hmm. honestly... I don't feel sad about that shit. No, the slave owner should have never even, that should have been put down early on. That's what I was getting at. Yeah, I'm, not I'm, not talking, I'm not talking about the personal businesses. I'm not talking no. about right. corporate businesses. I'm talking, I'm talking about an establishment yes. that needs to be burnt down. I agree I'm with that. About, I'm not talking about a true uproar. Right? The old way of life, yes. the old government. Yeah, it's it's not working. Yeah, the system needs to change. It this, to we're, change. We are in the midst of a big uh, paradigm shift, and it's not going to go back to the way it was. No. And we don't want it to go back to the no. way it was. No. It can't. I don't think. <laughs> There's like no way in hell it can go back to how it was. That will make America great thing. Make it a, make when it a was great it again. Great, right? Exactly. Make yeah, it right? great for the first time. This right. is what exactly. this, we are making America great now. We're, yeah. we're making the world great. Now. Yes, I think it should be a worldview, not so much America, because again, no one matters more than anybody else. America does not matter more than the rest of the world. I think as a world, we truly need to bond together and just honestly fucking seek out the racists the bigots that are there you know it well, I feel like everyone always says that the u.s is so great for this and that reason but honestly look at it yeah look at it i mean Very i true. am proud to be who i am and have the rights that i have and all that stuff but honestly look at the numbers of the usa in this pandemic yeah look yeah. at look at what the administration and all those things and all these hardships america is angry you guys america is not great America is broken. America is pissed the fuck off. And yeah. look at it. Everyone can see now because everyone has a fucking computer yeah, and see. a phone in their hand. We can all see it. Their, yeah. their leader was okay with people being upset about their businesses, but he's not okay with people standing up for the rights of others. Exactly. exactly. And that's, for their human fucking rights. Yeah, and it's like, but, it's just like, I mean, no business is above the rights of others, corporate or small business. Like, if if you're gonna like loot or whatever, go after the businesses that stand behind that looter. Yeah, like, that support that. Not the small. And people were businesses. pissed off because Target got broken into and all that. You know what happened? Target closed and, and boarded up their windows, not because of they were hurt, but because they stood behind the movement. Target not only closed down and said, "Okay, I'm gonna still play. I'm gonna." They said, "I'm gonna pay my employees because you know we stand behind it, but we're gonna close our doors." Well, also too, like. Some businesses, like, look at them in the States, or, yeah, that, well, it's obviously in the States, but, um, like, some, the same businesses that stayed open during the pandemic uh, hired armed guards to watch their businesses so they don't get broken into yeah. or anything. So, like, they're not, you know, in it for the rights of others. They're more in it for, Money. you know, protecting their merchandise, protecting mm -hmm. their business. It's like, 
And uh, does it does it not seem convenient also that in this pandemic, okay, they were trying to so hard to keep doors open, mm -hmm. and then they started opening up everything where the curve had not flattened whatsoever. Mm -hmm. If if anything, it's still going up in a major way. And so now businesses were totally open, and then now there's stacks of bricks near things. So that the yeah. what? So you know why? So these businesses get messed up and guess what now the government's not in, not in any way responsible to help those business owners because guess what riots fucked your shit up yeah oh, and vandalism oh. is not covered in most insurances exactly that's what i'm saying so mm -hmm. how convenient. let's not talk about insurance that's another fucking so how yeah. convenient oh yeah that these yeah. businesses will not be they're not going to be saved by the government because guess what pandemic they said, you can open your doors now. We're, we're going to be okay. We're going to open up. We're going to be okay. We're going to set standards of living now that are going to be, that'll make the public safe. So you can open your doors. Oh, and now because of the protests and riots, all your shit's fucked up. And guess what? We don't cover that either. So sorry, you're open, but sorry, we can't help you now either. You know, so either way, small right, before, businesses were messed up. Before we carry on here, let me, let me just say, um, uh, we had a, a caller. Okay. Uh, who was supposed to call in tonight, but he had to back out. He's he's having uh, he's got some family issues to attend to, so okay. he apologized. He's unable to call in. Okay. Um, the other two callers have not responded to me yet. So, Duff, waiting. you put the you put the link out into the chat. I did. Yes, he did. If there's anybody in the chat? Feel free to call in if you would like to. You know, yes. um, hey, even just to say hi if you want to, right? Yeah. But we want to hear some stories too if you got any, right? So, so I think. I think I think uh, let's let's lead into that now. Let's lead into some some stories that we can talk about. Yeah. Um, so not just the, the general scope of how we feel about this this whole situation. Let's lead, let's talk about what we were supposed to aim at tonight, which yeah. is stories about law enforcement. So download the Zoom app if you haven't. And oh, okay. So we got uh, we got one guy here that's supposed to supposed to call in. It looks like he's able to. Who are we talking to? I'm just going to drop the invite to him. All right. Let's Let's see. All right. Let's see how this goes. Uh, yeah, we're good. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Follow your chair. <clears throat> So who's calling in here? Um, we got uh, William William Harrison oh. is uh, he'll, he'll be calling in shortly. William P. Yes. I don't know. I don't suppose anyone has any geek stuff they want to talk about quickly, just to fill a little bit of this dead air. Oh boy. We played Harry. We played Harry Potter trivia last night. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was dope. You guys are that so was fun. fun. And all the questions were in time, so me and Chris were like, okay, <laughs> this is the question. These are these are the options. And That's like, cute. Like saying answers, and I'm like, no, but it's this. And he's like, yeah, but no, but this. And then it was like a solid hour and a half of it. Hour and a half. 75, 75 questions. Each question had about 25. That's questions. amazing that they can think of that much shit to ask. And they're hard questions, too. Oh, they weren't. It's crazy. They were, they were not some easy, of the, Some of the questions were really easy, but then some of the other questions, you're like, where did this fucking come up? Yeah, there was one time where I was like, there's no way anyone got this. And it was, I think it was like, it'll tell you the percentage of people who got yeah, yeah. it wrong. And I think it was like, there was 49 percent got it wrong. And I was like, no, 49 got it right. Oh, yeah. So like Everybody else was like, what the hell are you talking about? Wow. Yeah. And it was everything from the like, books and the movies. The books, and the movies. It was the whole Harry Potter world was yeah. contributed. It was so it was awesome. Like, so it was like Fantastic Beasts, the movies, the books, Everything. and then Harry Potter, the books, and the movies as well. It was like if you're a total Potterhead, you're it's yeah. you're it, it was totally our shit. It was good. It was fun. <laughs> it was great. So that happened. Right. This is this is, <laughs> this is uh, of expertise. Quarantine meal. trivia that became a new hobby. <laughs> okay, it's better than you know other things like the whole world bought tickets to get into the trivia so it wasn't just like canada or the u.s either there's like people from all over the world that yeah. get in there oh and the names that they created for their teams were pretty badass <laughs> oh dude. my god there yeah. was one it was snakes on a plane <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> it's cute what was the granger i like that oh uh the granger zone the granger <laughs> zone wow. it was so good you know so, hermione granger meal the next time that we're going to be doing this yeah 15th I believe so. I think, I know. I think it's oh, it's oh, we should do an F this podcast. We have our caller? Yeah. Ooh, exciting. Yay. 
Hello. Can I push the answer button, guys? Oh, he uh, invited me to his meeting. Oh. Uh, 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 no, no, you come uh, here. <laughs> Rocco did that to me on the other podcast, and it kind of dumped the whole video of me. And... <laughs> yeah, we can't do that again. So what we're going to say is the next So, William, time... if you're listening, uh, I have sent you the meeting info to your message. To your text. Also, that we posted it in the comments to the uh, ID and also the password. That's correct. So the next time we do it, Neil, we're gonna we're gonna be in it as effing muggles. All right. So we'll make so it a whole podcast. We'll all do it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So, those of you guys yeah. listening and you don't so, know, we have a podcast called Effing Muggles, and we totally nerd out on Harry Harry Potter in whole episodes. And uh, so yeah. hopefully we can so hopefully we can figure out if Neil's Neil's got that day off so that we can because it starts at five thirty p.m. I don't know if it. It is. It is. You look it at is. it. Okay. I know that I won't have it off because God, damn it. there's more though. There's okay. like ten of them. It's yeah. Off. Okay. Yeah. Freaking Neil. There's other ones like uh, Game of Thrones and Jeez. Big Bang Theory Dude, and Games. Friends and Hunger Games. So there's there's a bunch. Wow. OMG, that's exciting. Actually, <laughs> I, be, I bet you they have Star Wars too. They have to. Oh, oh dude. Yeah. How did I not think of that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For real. Oh. Have you ever played Star Wars Trivial Pursuit? I haven't. Dude, that was like the, if you want to date my daughter, you have to play Star Wars Trivial Pursuit. It, it was, it was <laughs> OMG, that's cute. Yeah, my mom's like, if they can't play Trivial Pursuit Star Wars, then they're not allowed to. They're not nerdy enough for you. Yep. We're not nerdy. You're not nerdy. We're not worthy. <laughs> Okay, Neil. We did play Dungeons News. and Dragons for the first time oh, as well. Wow. <laughs> and we got through like what thirty minutes? No, what was the actual day, huh? Yeah, it was like a night a night's worth in the game. But yeah. it was like three, four hours. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait, wait though. It was it. way fun. I just want to put this out there. Anybody who hasn't played it before or thinks that it's it's below them or that they're too cool. Uh -huh. you You're know. lame. You're yeah, you'll have a good time. You'll enjoy yourself if you play it. Well we were drinking heavily too. Let's put that. <laughs> Heavily. And Shantae was the <laughs> the highlight, I think. <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> hey guys, shut up. Here's William. <laughs> Welcome, William. His uh video is joining right now. All right. Very happy to hear from you, William. You got it, yeah. yeah. He's, there he is right there. All right. Are you here, okay, your video feed is connected. I'm just waiting for the mic. Okay, William. <clears throat> Welcome to F Drips. Hello. As the mic comes on, it's it's a, it's a yeah. It's got to be a sort of a distance. Okay. There you go. Welcome, hey. William. There you are. Hi. Hey, I made it. How are you doing? Good. I'm doing fine. Thank you. All right. Let's. All right. I'm gonna go around the table and introduce you to everybody at the table here for F this podcast. We've got Neil. Hey, William. Nice to meet you. Hi. Hey. Hey. Duff. Yo. Hey, Duff. Sarah. Say hi. Hi. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Um, and you know from the other podcast, we've cut it up already before. Um, you know, you know the reason that you're calling in. So we're doing um, experiences with law enforcement. Is that what okay. the yeah. title is? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So the floor is yours, sir. Okay, I've um. I, my whole entire life, I'm uh, 51 years old. My name is William P. Harrison. I'm a producer. I produced music for Tommy Hilfiger of Asia for 21 years, sub-company Darwin Incorporated in Japan. Um, I am now independent, running my own production company here out of uh, Udon Thani, Thailand, and uh, with uh, Make Records Asia out of Singapore with Lee Raka. Um, my whole entire life, I've had no bad experiences with law enforcement at all. I've had no run-ins, no bad experiences. I can say nothing bad. My family, current family is law enforcement um, per se. And um, I see both sides of the coin and I can relate and understand both sides of the situation because in my opinion, it's human people that are bad. Not necessarily the position is used for power and for power to manipulate situations and people for gain, for, for excess, for um, profit, for greed, 
for basically all the the, the seven sins. And uh, that being said, back in 2004, I was running a business that was an online matchmaking service, and we were accused of producing escorts. Um, this was not true and not the case, and we fought it in court. Um, we thought it was a pretty cut and dry case because our company was up and running for many years. We had many clientele and we've never had any run-ins or people dealing with this, but we realized that it was a corruption grab and another agency was, was, was trying to hone in on the same market and tear us down by, by doing illegal acts and illegal things to try to gain access and customers. And we were exposed by uh, Investigation TV. They tried every which way to expose that we were corrupt and you know doing illegal business, and we weren't. And there was no story to be had there. So they manufactured a story against us. And I, being the CEO and president of the company, um, decided to fight it because I wanted to prove once and for all that we weren't doing anything wrong and corrupt. Of course. But what I was naive with was hiring a, a lawyer, doing everything correctly and doing procedure. And the naivety of the legal system in, and this was in my former city, Konkan, Thailand, was um, that of, uh, don't worry, everything will be taken care of. So the day in question, we showed up at court to fight the charges against us and, you know, basically plead our innocence. And we, uh, the lawyer, you know, he showed up and he, he didn't even, he showed up, an intern showed up to represent us and the judge was offended by it because the judge was offended by it and the people tried to uh, slap money under the table. Um, I was denied bail. They wouldn't allow me bail and I ended up spending the next month and a half in Thai prison in holding. Yeah. <clears throat> Now, during the whole time this case was going on, every step of the way, I was asked to make the case go away by producing some type of payment under the table to anybody that would be willing to help me make the case go away because they didn't want to really prosecute the case. The district attorney didn't want to prosecute it. He said, ha -ha, this is the cost it would take to make the case go away. I says, I'm not paying that cost. I'm not paying anything. I want the case to go through. I want to prove that I'm not doing anything wrong. That way, in the future, I won't have to be sitting here again. Mm -hmm. But the naivety of it, realizing how quickly things could have went sideways at the time, is uh, unbelievable that I was, uh, you know. But I don't regret the situation that I did and what I did at the time. But every step of the way, I was offered a chance to back out and get out of the case because nobody wanted a prosecutor. All the way from the police chief to the arresting officer because I had to be arrested, I had to be booked, I had to be, you know, and right up until that, the police station, I, I didn't spend any time in jail at the police station. And I didn't figure I would spend any time in jail the day of I went to the court. So when the judge says, we deny you bail, you're going to be in detention until the case is tried, I was like unprepared. I was in a suit and tie and I was completely wow. unprepared, unprepared for this. Wow. So for the next, and there's no detention center here. So in Concan, it's a small country city. So I was put in, uh, put in the prison as detention, waiting trial. And because the case was a five-year case of providing escort service through online services, it was a five-year criminal case. They viewed me as a flight risk. Even though I'm the CEO of a company, I've been in Thailand for close to 10 years at that time. I'm well established in the community. I'm a Rotarian. I belong to the local Rotary group. I was completely just flabbergasted and shocked. Yeah, I can imagine. Wow. What went through your head when you heard that you would be, I guess, detained inside the actual prison? I couldn't imagine. I looked at it, I looked at it twofold. I was just like, I can't believe that my lawyer was this naive and this stupid. I yeah. can't believe that I took it for granted. I can't believe I did all these things wrong. 
right. but I didn't put enough time, energy, and effort to really look into how the system was going to go because it all, all it was was a system. Mm-hmm. Okay, once I got that through my head and realized that I'm going to have to do this, my next place was how to get out of where I am, how to make this, you know, okay, I realize that I'm going to be here now until the court case goes in. So my lawyer said we can appeal. So two days later, we appealed. I was denied appeal. Two days later, we appealed. I was denied appeal. So after three appeals, I knew I wasn't getting out until I went to court. So the next thing was, hey, they gave me the option again to expedite it by, you know, slapping money under the table again to expedite the trial, to expedite the court case, to move it up in the schedule of the cases. Otherwise, I could be in there for three, four, five months. I was like, how? Do you so think at that point, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> at, at that point in time, I decided to pay the money through my lawyer to expedite the court case because that's the way the tie. I realized, as my lawyer explained to me, I'm sitting in a, you know, in a in a glass room talking by telephone to my lawyer and my wife. Uh, that this is how the Thai court system works, and I'm just realizing that this is a big business. This whole thing is a big big business and as I spent the month and a half in there I've just realized how big of a systematic business it is and how corrupt that business is and how cheap slave labor is for um, for the Thai government to use people as as you know you get sentenced for five years plus hard labor or you get five years plus manufactured labor you get five years plus you know construction labor meaning not only are you doing time, but you're giving a job or a position inside and you get a minimal amount. You don't even get paid. You get credit for products and stuff that the prison sells and provides for you. So it's not like you ever get anything. You just get, you know, maybe a daily toothbrush or toothpaste or upgrade in food or something like that. Wow. So I got to see in the month and a half I was there exactly what a Thai prison was, is, how it ran, and it's ran just like the military. And it's segregated, but it's a very much a business. They had people making fishing nets. They had make them, you know, concrete blocks, um, rice, food. Um, but everybody had a job and position, and you, you worked. It was basically a town inside walls, basically. And it ran just like town. And at that time... I was the very first American to ever set foot inside the prison as being tamed in the city, in the history of the city. Wow. So I was, so I was taken special care of. So I had VIP treatment. I had a guy that shadowed me everywhere I went. I wasn't allowed to go anywhere by myself. Um, these men, they had, uh, you showered outside in the open. They had big, huge water troughs where you showered outside in the open. They wouldn't let me participate in that. So they'd wrap a sarong around their waist, yeah? So they'd be naked from their head up and have a sarong on, and they would douse themselves with water. Well, they wouldn't allow me to do that. I had to go, you know, go into the uh, captain's office and take my shower oh. every day. So I was given VIP treatment, and I sat in the security office with the with the the head of the command of the prison. So I saw firsthand the daily operation because I was in the command center, the general main office inside the prison. I saw the warden, the warden staff, um, and uh, the warden secretary ended up being a really close friend of mine and still a friend of mine now once he's out. And uh, his mother took very good care of me when I was inside. And the uh, service, the community service that her group provides. She's a, she was a retired school teacher at the time, while well, still is. But I met many, 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 many wonderful people that I've, uh, that I've uh, still connect with and uh, call family today. Um, for many years, I helped start and organize um, the prison league football or soccer league, where the prisons um, would compete against each other. So they would, they would take the football team from one prison from one city and bring it to the prison over another city and they would play a, a football or a soccer match inside the prison against each other. 
And um, it was all sponsored through charity organizations. And I helped organize and set that up. And it's been, it was running for three or four years until the, until the Thai government went into uh, martial law four or five years ago, and they shut down all these types of programs inside. Wow. So it's no, wow. No, longer, no longer going on. But every year I would go back and watch the championship game inside a prison somewhere in Thailand. Right. It's wild. What were the accommodations like there? I mean, I really don't have any knowledge. Was it just like you guys each, like here in America, you have like two cellmates there and you know you would go to the main hall to eat or whatever was it the same there no now you'll be shocked by this i was in a i was in a room that was uh four about eight meters by 12 meters the cement wall went went about knee high from the rest of the way up it was chain link fence on one wall, the front wall, the other three sides were concrete. You had one squat toilet in the corner that had a waist high wall, so enough to sit and squat without being seen. But you could tell that somebody was on the toilet squatting and taking a shit. <laughs> right. Now, inside that room, your space was exactly the size of your body. So you had a futon, fold up futon that laid on the floor. They fit as many as those futons in that that 12 by eight space, that 12 by eight meter space as they could. Wow. So we had between 45 to 50 people in there every day. Wow. And this was just the, this was just the, the new, the new, the daily new people that came in. Now they wouldn't let me go into general population. The rooms in general population were a little bit bigger and had a little bit more space and they had less people. So you cut that space probably in, that, that people in by half. So the the number of people where I was changed daily depending on how many people came into the prison that night and how many people left. So that was like the you know the daily holding room. Right. right. Now my food, I didn't eat prison food. I was allowed people to give me and send me food in. So you know, my family would send me McDonald's or whatever I wanted wow. at lunchtime. But I had to, once again, I had to pay special option VIP for that service. Yeah. Now, I was a smoker at the time, and uh, my wife had to go through the back pig pen where the guys would go out to the farm every day, so they'd have outside labor, and they'd have to smuggle my cigarettes in, and I had to pay for that service. Wow. That's so crazy. Wow. Now, were other people, like, pissed that you got i don't know the special services and stuff um no nobody took offense to it because it was it was all historic in their in in their view inside the prison the prison treated it as like a historic type thing so it was wow. it was kind of like surreal right Hi, i'm being i'm being i'm being i'm being i'm being uh discriminated against by the Thai government kind of but I'm being treated VIP in a situation that that's the way the system is. Right. But they're accommodating me as best as they possibly can to protect me because they don't want an American to die in the prison for <laughs> a bullshit case, a bullshit charge. Right. It's weird. Causing an uproar and then getting, you know, the camera pointed at them and having to do a reform and there's, yeah. Kind of like what's going uh, on in America right now. Watching their asses. Now, I had, uh, I, had the, I had the ambassador to the American to America come to visit me at the embassy and uh, he had to give them a two-day notice that he was coming and in those two days notice they cleaned everything because he came inside the prison not just in the you know the visitation room but he came inside the prison to check the accommodations where I stayed so I was very very happy about the American government and and the ambassador coming to check and make sure that wow, I was okay. Wow, that's amazing. And my case got expedited very quickly after that. Wow. Wow. Crazy. Now, I know, I'm like outcome, speechless. Now, the outcome of the case was this. I was proven innocent. The two people that accused me of the charges, because uh, the, this, is, this is one thing about Thailand. You just don't go around accusing people and suing people for just unjust cause because they do have a very strong uh, 
face clause or slander slander clause okay. in the community and you know and it's a it's a section in the constitution it's the uh, least majesty law and that's uh you know putting the king and queen ahead of state and you can't slander the king and queen and that goes right along with people you don't slander somebody in public and if you do you, you can be held accountable for it because of this law and it's very strict so you just don't go around verbally slandering people in public or in the media and we have the computer crime act in place where you just can't be uh, social media madness on the internet and you think you can get away with it without being prosecuted in real life and the fines are very strict here so being 80 percent of the population being on social media here it's very strict on uh, censorship wow Wow. That's almost not, a, I mean, I don't want to say it's a bad thing, but it's not really a bad thing. I mean, if you're unable to slander someone in public, that would kind of, I bet that would infringe on our freedom of speech here in America. I don't know where to go with that one, really. <laughs> well, when it's put into their constitution where you, you, you if it, that's not saying people don't do it. They do it here all the time, but that means you have to have the finances to pay the fine that or the repercussions or whatever, you know, comes with, with your actions, because there's always a, you know, a just cause at the end of your action. Right. But that's it's So they're pretty much cash cows. Then every person there is a cash cow. Having uh, their, to pay. Money, their money has the king on it and they value the king over everything. Yeah. Wow. So when you base your society on that thinking, you know, how do you, how do you judge moral and, uh, you know, the moral and uh, other values that we 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 take uh, that we, we put on we put on pedestals. Yeah, they don't. They look at it as this. Hi, it's business. Wow. Right. We have a we have a conscience. Sometimes their conscience is not fueled by you know thinking. What's clearly. just? Mm -hmm. Right. So, how yeah. long have you been? I mean, I know that you said that you've been there for upwards of like 10 years, but how long have you been there before all this had gone down? I think you said it was, you were there for 10 years and now you've been there maybe 15? No, I've been here. That was, um, yeah, I was here. I, I arrived in two, that was here by me about five or six years when that happened. I've been here since 2000. I arrived in Thailand March, uh, in March 2000. So wow, I've been here since then. And you hadn't had any run-ins with the law enforcement over there up until uh, the slandering of your business kind of came up and, and went into that whole travesty then? Not really, no. I mean, I, I knew how the legal system works because we would have to uh, prosecute people ourselves. So I know how the legal system works, but I never thought that going to the court and having this happen would happen. I, you know, going to the police station and dealing with the police is one thing. Dealing with the court and dealing with the judges, that was a whole completely different experience. Wow, yeah, I can imagine. Now, dealing with the police and dealing with the police station, I, you know, that system is all done by hierarchy. And basically, the, the police want to take minor petty things and they want to try to work out a compromise um, at the police station before you have to sue somebody or the district attorney has to go or it has to be criminal or civil or libel or whatnot they try to work out a compromise in the police station before it gets to that point so now is that so the come, police station can be paid with that money there or is that just to expedite well, the process sure sure you have to sure they act as a middleman see thai people don't do business here without a middleman so it's always a third party so it's you them and somebody else as the mediator so everything's done in a third party here. So if I have a dispute, we go to the police station, the police acts as a mediator, we come okay. up with a compromise, a solution. When we compromise, we comp the police for being the middleman. He gets a compromise, you know, he gets a, a tip, as they call a it. A cut, yeah. A tip. Hey, do I get a tip? How much is a tip? Come on now. <laughs> true, true. Let me keep it straight. Did the tip go up this year? Inflation. It went up 2%, right? So that means we have to tip 2% more. <laughs> wow. It sounds, like, it sounds like an entire bureaucratic system altogether. Hey, yeah. every business here, every business player, every business here plays team money to the police for protection. 
Wow. Now the protection means just like in case something pops off and, and the cops are going to be like, well, you're up to payment, you know, is that what you That's mean? That's right. Yes. Yes. They keep, they keep track of it. Wow. It's all, it's all Like track. gangsters it's, and mobs. Yes. Yes, exactly. And wow. when you call, when you call, they come running. That's the way it's supposed to work. Just like, yeah. Just like the, just like, just like the mob. It, they considered, I mean, legal business. Yeah. This is such an amazing story. I'm so excited about you sharing this with us. Yes, thank you so much for sharing this amazing perspective. Okay, the ending, the ending of my legal case produced this. This was the ending results. Okay. I was found innocent of all charges. The two people that accused me were prosecuted, both found guilty. <gasps> I had an opportunity. Now, I, I chose not to prosecute them. The district attorney decided to prosecute them uh, separate on their own, and I had nothing to do with the case. And I didn't testify in their case, and I was not called to testify in their case. But they were both found guilty. Oh. Now, I took the other route. I claimed composition of the Thai government for detaining me illegally and for loss of wages in my company and defacing and defrauding my company in public. And the Thai government ruled and I got compensated for my time in prison. So this is the first time and uh, I've talked about this experience. Wow. Fantastic. Wow. Thank you so it, it was just though, I mean, that's like not a happy ending, but wow, it, it you know. I mean, just, yeah. They could have went in an entire other direction. Oh, so bad in the movies, you know, what you see. Reflecting back, yes, it could have went sideways many different ways at many different times. And I was just, you know, I, I was lucky that uh, I did everything correctly. So I, that, that, that perception of seeing corruption, that level of business, that level of society, that level of the way life is here on many different levels on daily, on a daily level for people in this society was just, I, I just, you know, it made me open my eyes that this isn't the only society that this happens in. And wow. then I can see that how, how it is in America, how it is in Canada, how it is in other countries. And right now, my opinion is there's a, there's a global agenda happening and people are not aware of it. And I feel people, you know, okay, everything matters and black people matter and Asian people matter and the, world matters and but we we all live here together right we, we don't think the same we don't eat the same we don't look the same we don't act the same we are not the same we individual dots on the globe around our little place that's not exactly flat that's not exactly round that's you know not exactly all dirt and brown we have a lot of majority of blue and happy in the world and we need to spread that more so than the, than the turmoil and the drama and the chaos and taking advantage of, of, of good. Yes, exactly. I'm just so happy that, I mean, the justice, their system, I don't want to say served you because, I mean, I'm assuming that you may hold a dual citizenship, but just that you were not like, like Chris said, it could have gone so much worse. I mean, it's not even funny. Do you, like, are there other people inside that you were able to talk to and hear their, a little bit of their stories, what they were in for? Um, were they treated, like, horribly there, or was it still kind of a just system? Uh, no, it was um, a lot of people that were caught dealing or using or having some kind of drug. And I'm talking mm -hmm. meth, meth, methamphetamine, uh, yaba, or ice, um, you know, these, these chemical drugs. But they're not doing pills here like Oxycontin per se before. That's, that was then. Now they've okay. switched the, the, the pill forms and stuff here because they, the underground stuff has been, I mean, it's coming not from Thailand anymore. It's coming from, from Myanmar. It's coming wow. from Burma. So, you know, it's coming from the Golden Triangle still. Wow. Right. So a lot of drugs get smuggled through through uh, no Chiang Mai and Chiang Mai and the north northwest into Thailand. So it's kind mm -hmm. of like you know, but it's changed over the years, but it's still controlled by you know organizations. Right, right. Wow. Dude. I have to deal with some people because I work with uh, 
I work with a businessman who imports uh, fabric, and uh, he's an Indian man, and he imports it into Thailand and exports it from Thailand to India. But he was buying from China, and as soon as America put the embargo on China, you think America changed anything China did? No, they just changed the shipping route. That's all they did. So China started dumping the material in Vietnam in these big, huge, like, hay bale rolls. And then it would be shipped to the warehouse in Vietnam and chopped up and put on pallets. So it'd be put on square pallets. Reshipped, rebranded, repackaged, put on a truck, shipped from Vietnam through Laos into Thailand, Thailand into a boat to India. But the origin of the original material was China. Mm -hmm. Wow. It was repackaged, remanufactured in Vietnam. That's what I, me and my mom were having that conversation. Like, it's not going to stop. They're just going to move it in a different direction. Yeah. Right. I'm in a different door. Absolutely. Just works. try the window. The door didn't work. <laughs> That's right. Yep. Hey, the Chinese believe that, you know, what goes in the front's got to come out the back. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's that's how you know it, it generally goes. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, William, for sharing your experience. I mean, it, that really is is eye opening, dude. And and we really respect you for coming on air and sharing with us. Yeah, we appreciate it. Oh, I love I love Thailand. I love Thai people. I, I'm so happy I'm here. I'm I'm blessed that I'm here. And to the Kobe thing, the Thai government is did a great job in protecting its people and protecting its its economy and not tearing it down. And, you know, we're to the point where we can be able to reopen and reorganize again. So I only have praise for the situation and for what they've done. So I, you know, I, I, I my, like I said, my, my version of law enforcement and government is two different things. And, but I, I really believe that there's a, a global agenda that people are following but it's it's up to the individual governments and governors and prime ministers to think on their own what's good for their area that they to that they represent and you know take care of because if you know it's their watch right. Right. exactly true enough all right well uh william thank you for calling in um much much respect to you for uh sharing that story and it's it's a true testament to the like the spirit of, of of a person to go through all that and to still come out as positive and strong as you are right now absolutely well i looked at it i looked at it once i was inside and realized that i wasn't going anywhere to look at it as a learning experience what can i learn from this experience right what can i gain from this experience what can i do to you know I, you know, I can look at it from two ways. I could be, you know, depressed and, you know, down and, you know, angry and bitter. And, but why? What does that, what does that, what does that promote? What does that, you know, it's not good for anything. It's not going to help you in the direction that you want to go. Yeah. So, you know. Alrighty. I, like I said, I met a lot of interesting, wonderful people. Um, after I was in there two weeks, we had a, uh, Two young Australians, um, 18 and 22, come in from Laos, and uh, they were they were uh, stone still, and uh, they emptied out their backpack, and they had enough heroin for their personal use, not realizing that they had enough heroin to make them 50 years in Thailand. And they tried just to you know take it with them as they travel. It's basically you know take it as we go type thing. Well, they were being detained, but they were going to prosecute them and do the trial in Bangkok, so they had to move them, so they would move them by prison. So I was one day called into the office and said, hey, we're going to make you security detail. We've got these two Australians going to be staying here 24 hours. It's your job to take care of them, make sure nothing happens to them. <laughs> and all the while, you're supposed to be, like, one of the, the people who's staying there anyway. Like, you're locked up, too, and they're like, hey, we got a job. <laughs> I got a, you're, you got a job now. You're, you're going to work. That's all. <laughs> I ended up, I ended up having a job and going to work too. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Security. That's true. Wow. <clears throat> Craziness. 
I've never Always. heard anything about Thailand. So now it's like, oh, that's that's foreign. That's cool. Right. I'm writing down all these names and things he's saying because I want to look. Google it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thailand myself is is like in movies. Yeah. 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 Exactly. You know, I was thinking of one movie. I can't remember what it was called for the life of me, but it was these two women and they, it was based on a true story and they were locked up in yeah. one of the prisons there. Broke Down Palace. Broke Down Palace. That's right. Yes. Yes. You know, that movie's banned. That movie's banned here. Oh, wow. Oh, well, for obvious reason, is there any truth to the movie that you would say? Yes, it's similar. But that's, you know, you, see now you from an but you got to look at it. See, my eyes, I look at it from a different view than your eyes because I live in the society. So I know exactly what the society is. So when I look at it, I see the truth to it. Yes, because that's how the society is. You look at it and see it. Oh, and you're judging it based on your society. Right. Not necessarily the society that you see here and how it actually is. So, yes, there are similarities to it. Right. It is I'm brutal. Say that because I think that a lot of people need to realize that just because where you come from, this is how it is, does not mean that this is how it is everywhere else in the world. Exactly. Was, I mean, your your basic accommodations would be five star accommodations here. So let's let's put let's put the living conditions in the or the you know the living standard into perspective. Your basic standards is VIP here. Yeah. Wow. Wow. No, no, there was one other one that, were, that I watched where it was an American. Hangover part two. Wrong. Parts parts of uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's The Beach is depicted correctly. Wow. wow. Okay. So when he travels from when he travels from Bangkok down to Wahine, down to Koh Samui, down to the island Koh Phangan, down to the island, that's that's all. That's all. What he says in that whole, those whole scenes is pretty close to the truth. Mm. Pretty close to what you see if you were to come here. Okay. All right. What you would have saw, we are now closed and, you know, closed oh, off. Yeah. No foreign travelers coming here now. We have no outside. But. No, I mean, the, the reason why I was explaining that, the movie that I watch is because what they were, what you were saying about the, the, the size of the prison rooms and what was going on, you know, where the toilet is and how many, you just had these little mat cots that you were sleeping on. Um, the movie that I watched, that's what happened with him. He was an American kickboxer, and then he got busted with drugs, and then he was put into the prison and sentenced to 50 years. And it was based on a true story. So, yes. when you were explaining well, what your living condition, what the living conditions were in, in, in your room, that's what I saw, was what I saw in that movie. So it was just, it was just crazy that that, that that was like how accurate they were with this movie. Well, out. somebody, somebody actually cleans the room every day. Yeah, that's part. We have cleaning detail. So somebody goes in and cleans the room every day. They take everything outside, beat it down. These futons, they beat them down, put them in the sun, clean the room, disinfect it, and then put the futons back in. So your your space is cleaned when you come back in the evening. Right. You don't that's even know what healthy. happened during the day. So it's 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 cleaned every day. Wow! Wow! That's awesome. Oh, I didn't I didn't see I didn't see any unsanitary conditions. I looked to me like it was a work camp. I mean, like I was in a, you know, at a work camp. Right. Like you would be going off to work, like working on the oil field or working, you know, working out as a lumberjack or out in the forest. And it was like a work camp. That's how I, I perceived the content prison. Wow. Okay. That's, that's pretty Truly like, amazing. Yeah. Like stepping back to 1975, I mean, you had, they were running Windows 98 at the time on the computers in their office. So, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <All right>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, William. Well, uh, right. thank you for calling in and sharing your story. I really appreciate it, and uh, yeah, yeah we we'll look forward to uh, hearing from you again in the future. Definitely. Thank you. Take it easy. Stay safe. Stay safe. Thank you, sir. It was nice meeting you. It was nice meeting all of you. Thank you. Sure. Good evening. Arch is up. Sunny top. All right. Well, that was, that was truly really amazing. Great. Yeah. Um, Sorry for the dead air, everybody. We're kind of trying to switch gears right now, just in case uh, you didn't know what was uh, going on. We are not slowing in speed. We have also stories, personal stories from each of us here that I'm sure we could share. Well, I don't 
don't I don't have anything that intense that's for sure no no not I mean I think we started really strong with William's story I mean going from just the Thailand I mean in my mind as an American citizen I see Thailand as like this very harsh very scary state to be in so now to hear from William that they are good to their people um, and that they do have somewhat of a just system because I, I really can't judge being and never having traveled to Thailand. Um, it's just, it's eye opening on how the media can really affect uh, our vision uh, when it comes to different countries and stuff like that. That's for sure, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, um, I think we're having trouble with my vocals. Oh, no. You can sound better now, Chris, before you were a little hard to hear. I could still hear you, it was just not like well, you're everybody up, else. All the way up. Oh, weird, yeah. okay. Oh, I'm... <laughs> Hello. There you go. Yeah, Get there. your mouth in it. <laughs> I have to wrap my lips around it. Shanti, you got to pick them. Yeah, get the mic right up there. So. All right. So I, I sort of have like a personal experience. I shared it with uh, Chris and Malcolm on the drive over. So I just, when I speak about police or anything like that, I usually just cite any sort of like law enforcement figure, authority. So um, I can't exactly remember how long ago it was, but it was, I believe it was 2014. So it was probably the most horrific days. Um, I didn't mention what day it was, but it was like days before Christmas that year. So I grew up, um, I have two brothers, two sisters. But we also grew up with our um, our stepmom's brother, who was probably about the same age as my sister. My sister is about three years younger than me. Uh, they were fairly close in age. They were um, pretty inseparable growing up. They were like best friends because we grew up in the same we grew up all in the same neighborhood there uh, prior because he was actually living with his mom at the time. Um, he was a good kid. And yeah, so uh, he was actually down in Vancouver, I believe it was 2014, I want to say. So um, he wasn't in the right state of mind. Um, I kind of forgot why he was in the hospital initially the night of but he was discharged a bit too early. And um, basically it was in Surrey, the Surrey part of Vancouver. So uh, he got off at the SkyTrain station. No, he went to the SkyTrain station. Um, he somehow had access to knives and he wasn't harming anybody. He was actually self-harming. So I guess he went to Safeway that was pretty close to that sky train station and it was in the early mornings of that that day um, For some reason transit police were called and it didn't take them very long to actually like shoot him So he was self-harming himself. He wasn't harming anybody else but they saw a First Nations young man with a knife and they shot him and he died because of his wounds wounds there they didn't try to you know take the knife away from him he wasn't trying to stab anybody else but they shot him it was just they saw it and bam shot him like there was no hey put the knife down or anything like that yeah so to give a bit of perspective um, we were discussing it a bit too earlier on the drive. Uh, in Canada, we do see a lot of racial issues. It's just in Canada, it's more with the First Nations people. So um, back when Black Lives Matter first took off uh, at the beginning of the decade, there was Idle No More. And it was essentially the same thing, but for equal rights for First Nations under the under the eyes of the law enforcement because they were being racially profiled. And I know a lot of people in the area will probably agree there's some parts of the country where 
shit like that sort of happens. There's different things that the police will do with First Nations people, but that's neither here nor there. Basically, the transit police arrived on the scene. They didn't really do much to de-escalate the situation and just took a young man's life. They just full uh, force to shut it down. Yeah. Yeah. And as far as I know, or no, it's not as far as I know. It's public record that the officer that took the shot didn't get charged with anything. There was no disciplinary action. They deemed it as, you know, this young man who had who was not in the right state of mind was supposedly a threat to the public. He wasn't attacking anybody. He was a harm to himself, and they took his life. Right. That's my personal story. That's my family's story. My stepmom, like, absolutely misses her brother so much, of and course. it's heartbreaking. There's the articles available. Chris found it also, so we'll add that article too, so that everyone can see. Yeah, they can they can see for themselves that there was definitely something that happened very close to Neil and his family that is just not okay. Right. Exactly. No, I don't. I don't have any stories like that. I just like I've. I've all I can say is I've. I've never gotten off anything with a warning. As far as moving violations, right? <laughs> Straight to the ticket, you know. Cop looks. At they it. just pop your ass. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm You're a big dude. You have tattoos. Mm -hmm. oh, you can't see it all. It doesn't matter how polite I am. Keep my hands on the steering wheel. Ask him if I can go from my wallet safely. You know all this good stuff like that, right? Yeah. They don't care. I have a story. Right. Ooh. I know. I was. Um. I remembered it the other day when we had discussed it. I was like hanging out. I was like, oh my gosh, I do remember a time where it was like, what the fuck. And it wasn't because of uh, my color or anything like that, mm -hmm. but it was because I was a woman. Oh. Oh, did your tits get you out of a speeding ticket? <laughs> oh, what? Okay, so Sarah, you know um, about where I'm from in California because we grew up together. Um, mm -hmm. Let the people know. So we, me and Sarah both grew up in Southern California. Um, where we live um, is a long um, um, main highway that leads to Vegas, so in San Bernardino County, okay? Um, where I was at the time, um, you know um, that weird back dark road by Vertimont to go up to Logan's and Jeff's? Yes. Okay. Oh, God, that road is so scary. It's scary because it's all dark. There's no street lamps. It goes up no, there's no street. It's like gravel. Yeah. There's like, it, it's a straight up until you get to the school and then that, there's like new houses and stuff now. It's totally <laughs> from when we were younger. But at the time I was coming back from a house party, I believe, like leaving a house and then heading home. And so I was along that road and there were lights coming in the opposite direction, like towards me, right? And at the time I was driving my Jeep. I had my license. It was a new Jeep, though, so there wasn't a license plate on the front, although I did have the license plate in the vehicle. So there was that going for me. I was coming home, sober, um, fine, license, all of that, old enough, lawful, okay? <laughs> um, but dark road, uh, girl at night, I think it, it had to have been, like, pretty late coming back. And um, uh, there's a... There's, all I see is there's an SUV coming in the opposite direction. You can tell the shape of the vehicle, right? Yeah. Even though there's not lights and stuff. And um, all of a sudden, their lights go, boop, you know, you know, mm -hmm. you get that little warning to mm -hmm. so I'm thinking, oh, my God, I don't know any, like, I didn't do anything. Do I look weird, you know? <laughs> so, of course, I go and I pull over because I feel, like, weird about it. And at the time, I'm thinking that I didn't, of course, I would never think anything about getting pulled over by a cop because... They're cops, right? They're not supposed to harm you or anything. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, they did that light thing and spun around, pulled me over. I, um, of course, got my license and registration available and then rolled the window down, the whole thing. And the guy, uh, this Hispanic officer who's by himself, comes up to the window and he's like, hi, where are you, where are you going? I'm like, I'm driving home. And he's like, the address on your license? And I said, of course. And uh, he's like, where are you coming from? I said, a friend's house. He's like, have any drinks and all that? No. And he's like, okay, well, I couldn't, he, he was flirting with me. I could tell mm -hmm. by his, the way he was starting to talk to me that he realized I'm a girl by myself, Ooh. which gave me a very unsettling feeling. Yeah. yeah been there. And by myself on a dark road 
and there's this gentleman here who's now talking sweetly to me, and he said something along the lines was, oh, well, I couldn't see, uh, I couldn't see that you were a law-abiding citizen from that direction. <laughs> something Why'd you pull me over, ass? <laughs> Like, um, what direction was that? I'm like, okay. You fucking asshole. And he's like, he's like, well, I don't remember the rest of it, but that part of it, that thing he said to me, made me feel so sick to my stomach. Like, oh, ha ha ha. Because like, you put up your guard. Yeah, I can do whatever I want. This girl's by herself on a dark road, and I could have said anything, you know. <laughs> and so, what made me feel really bad about that is that I know that there's people out there who didn't get off the way I did. Do you know what I mean? I got pulled over on a fucking, where, why was I by myself in the fucking dark, you know? Yeah. And I felt like, Damn, oh girl. my God. And so like, I just came from a place where there was a bunch of big old dudes and I'm by myself. I should have took one of those bastards with me. Right? <laughs> you know, the really sad thing about that is that you should feel safe when a cop is oh, near you. That's why Absolutely. I feel, I feel weird. Yeah. When he started talking to me the way he did, that's when I was like, this is not okay. <laughs> then I felt like my doors are locked. And, I'll, and it, at the time, I think I had like one of those Nokia phones or something. Oh. <laughs> yeah. A brick, just a fist pack. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, that's great. And so I just remember like going home feeling just sick to my stomach, feeling like that could have been, you know, I can tell that you're a law of existence from the other direction. And saying that to me and then um, saying, okay, well, have a good night and be safe out there. Like, it was just weird. It was really icky. And I left that situation not feeling good about being alone with cops anymore. Right. Yeah. See. I think I was 18. I think I was like, I think I was 18 at the time. Right. Well, you know, as a woman, I've been there too. And I think a lot of our female listeners also have been there. Um, just to where you feel uneasy, that badge is shining bright in your face. But at the same time, you don't know who's on the other side of that badge. That badge was supposed to mean that they're going to protect us and, you know, get us to safety if shit hits the fan. But at the same time, people are people. So this person could be whoever he or she says that they are behind this badge and use it almost a, as a facade. Like, I'm safe. But, you know, there's been plenty of women out there who have been assaulted by um, bad, dirty cops or whatever. Right? Like, oh, you're going to get this ticket unless you we want to come to it. Yeah, why don't you show me a little something, something. It's even a running joke here that um, if you get pulled over, you know, pull your top down and, and make sure you take all your rings off. And... Yep. Right, right. Yeah. Talk yeah. sweetly. Yeah, yes, nice officer. Smile. Yes, sir. I, I do know a couple of stories about people uh, who have been physically beaten by police, but you know what? It's It's up to them to tell it. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, w I really wish that they would have shared in some capacity. Me too. It would have been, you know, would have been like nice. these, these stories yeah. are important yeah. to hear. Yeah, because it does happen here. People do get yeah. physically beaten. Do we have people right? listening right now? I can't. I can't. right. If you, I just posted yeah. the Zoom ID and the password, guys. If you want to just download Zoom and come in and tell your story, you don't have to have your camera on. You could be just only audio. If you're like chilling in your PJs, you know, uh, you can also message myself or anybody here. We have Facebook open and ready. We would just love to hear your stories. You know. Yeah. Like I think. I think we've learned too, like, for, well, maybe not learned from this, just this session, but like, we've come to the conclusion that, like, we shouldn't be afraid of officers, not just mm -hmm. people of color, but everybody. everybody. Regardless yeah. of what color, what gender you are, we shouldn't be afraid mm -hmm. of them. Like, no. that should change. That's, that's what that, should change. That's what should change for, for everybody. And that's what, you know, this movement is is aiming towards like if, if there's a lot of like assholes out there that are just like you know all lives matter well then if you believe that then you should be part of this too because you should be behind black lives matter because to a lot of people it doesn't matter exactly and that right and that's i think the focal point neil you're exactly right people who say i was one of those people in the very beginning when all this shit started to go down like uh, you know ashante middle school mm -hmm. you had the hispanics against the the african americans and um it was just it was like a war a race war to to span it out a little more but 
now it, it's like I get that you feel that everybody matters because everybody does matter. For fuck's sake, it they matter. I wish more people felt that lives are precious. Um, but right now, the black community needs help, mm -hmm. and they need people to be aware that there is a bias there here in California, especially the IE where Shantae and I are from. I am very proud to say that. 95, maybe 99% of people, I have not come in contact with people like that, but 99% of people out here love, we, we don't discriminate against race. Um, it's just very free, free flowing here. I know that you guys had mentioned the First Nation um, up there in Canada, which here it's weird. In, in California, if you are of Indian descent, especially if it's um, a certain, you know, tribe of Indians, you, it's like, I don't want to say that they're, they're privileged, but they have very nice homes and they, you know, get money from the casinos and stuff that they have and, and they're treated well. I mean, I can't say that because I'm not part of that. I do have a friend, my niece actually has a friend who has, um, just, she lives in a very nice home. She's very young. She has three boys. She's married, very happy. I mean, she doesn't have to work if she doesn't want to. So for me to hear that it is so different up there in Canada is it blows my mind. It's just something that I'm not used to. You know, California has been very, I can't say all of California, Southern California has been very um, equal, I want to say. I mean, I can't say that for everybody, but I have not seen hideous displays of racism in front of my face like just it right there comes, it also just it comes from um your perspective as well because yep. when my mom was married to a white man her experience was different from when she was married to a black man when i had a uh, a white husband my experience was different than having a native american husband right. being out in public with kids and looking young too like my experience growing up, I used to get beat up and thrown around almost every day because where I grew up, everybody was brown and I wasn't. So it's, yeah, I see that too. It's also too, like these are the way kids were brought up and stuff. Like my mom had to physically go to the school and <laughs> tell the principal, if my kid comes home with holes in her pants again, then I'm going to, you know, I'm going to press charges. So everyone mess. has a different perspective. I don't want to say that California is that w well off but I do know that California is better than in a, right. you know, it is. Yeah, I'm not, I feel states. like, I feel like me and yeah. white girls, we have a different perspective, but I don't. Exactly. Know. We've not never right. been on the other end of that. Because we've seen other things because our lives and the lives that we've led, we've experienced all the, diff we've experienced a lot of angles of it. Because yes. Of where you came from, because of where I came from, because of our parents, we were just, we have a lot of it and I feel like we're pretty good people for having all that. Well-rounded is something that a term that I like to use and it just sucks that other people cannot embrace um, just, I mean, it just comes from all sides. And all honestly, I did, I know we experienced racism, we experienced all those things in different ways, but I did not experience racism so hard, so much seeing it until moving here the way I see it and how Christopher's family experiences it and Malcolm and Neil and, and what they experience is complete. I never, I have never experienced the amount of racism before. See, that's a, I a don't think what people always, the outsiders say when they think about Canada, yeah. like, oh, Canada, Canadians are so nice and friendly. It and is nice. Like, hey, Canada you know what? is amazing. Canada is okay in some aspects, Canada's but racist. they're still very, very racist. Yeah, not everyone, still, guys, still, don't, still don't, don't, don't be offended by that. Don't be offended by what I, I'm not saying that everyone is. Yeah. Honestly, Canada is it's way slowed down. Canada is pleasant. I really love it here. I, I won't, I don't want to be anywhere else really, but yeah. um, I've time, never experienced um, people in hardship and with their broken hearts as much as being here seeing yeah. it mm -hmm. firsthand the stuff i've learned here i never knew i never knew until i came here how do you keep your mouth shut if somebody like do they just oh, spew out racial oh, racial slurs no way oh well when it comes to racial slurs sure like hell yeah and i've experienced it that. i've had people know. call me an umshua which means white person or whatever people call me that and i'm like excuse me i know what yeah 
Yeah. Like you basically called me a cracker to my face right now. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I, These are half, dude, I'm married to a native man. You better mm -hmm. shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and you do not talk to my family like that. You don't talk Absolutely to my not. people I love like that. I mean, there's, you don't keep your mouth shut. We, we probably don't get it as much because we're fair skinned natives. It's it's true. You guys are all like, like the white boy more, natives. More <laughs> natives compared to like others out here. Like I have one of my best friends is darker than me, but I, he's like, I don't know, 116th or 130 to one thirty second native. He's like <laughs> he's, he's, he's darker a few, than you. He's darker. a few shades darker than me. But I'm a few like, shades? Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> he uses that too to get to get through life right? like, I'm one thirty second. I, I, right? <laughs> Do you know fractions, bitch? Because you're about to. <laughs> I mean, fighting for rights is totally in my family. Like my oh, grandfather man. totally fought for the rights of um, my First Nations group. Mm -hmm. um, on the Nishka flag is his crest. Man. Like, he fought, like, well, not just him. I would say the collective of gentlemen in their time went for it, but he was, like, I believe the speaker for it. So, man. it's like, awesome. it's, man. it's pretty much in my blood to, you know, go for equal rights for all because. He fought for that so much. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like I should, I do a disservice to be on the wrong side of history. You Absolutely. Know? And I, I feel think... like people who are, you know, in the all lives matter boat should shut up and listen to the stories of people yeah. who have experienced these injustices, not just That's the right. ones that are making the headlines, but the people all of that are part of these protests, they should listen to their stories. They should listen and hear because and learn. Like they're too busy sitting on their, you know, high horse or yeah. on their mountain to not see the injustices that's going on around them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a that's a big one. Just close your mouth and keep listen. your eyes. How hard open. is it to listen, really? You know, Neil is expanding on that. Seek first to understand and then to be understood. So if you truly understand someone, you can, you can bear to hear a story or two, just like right now, everybody's had some kind of bullshit happen with somebody that they know when it comes to like officers or the law, whatever, court systems, what have you. But does it hurt? Will it make your ears bleed to listen to a fellow human being and say, you know what? I hear your story. <clears throat> I'm listening to you. Okay. You know, you don't have to pop in with, oh, well, what is it going to hurt just to say, you know what? Thank you for sharing that with me and becoming a better fucking human being. Yeah. We're raising <clears throat> the whole nother generation. You know, I myself have three sons, three white sons. They, I mean, there was no help on the color scale with that one. Sorry, guys, if that sounded a little fucked up, but it's very true. Um, so, <laughs> Like, where do I go from here? This is all changing. I don't want my sons to be seen as racist. I don't want people to say, oh, they're white. I don't ever want any of that. So I've raised them to kind of just love and, and be loved. And I hope that when they are men, they are not too macho to say, you know what, let me listen to thee because I care because I'm human. My Aunt Abby actually just commented her own story. So if you guys don't mind, I want to bring that up so she can hear your responses. My Aunt Abby, just to, to kind of throw you back there, she is, um, she's a little, a little hippie lady. I love her with all my heart. She's so free spirited. She's just very, she brings a sense of calm. Um, she is the youngest, well, no, my Aunt Linda, no, she is the youngest girl. My mom was the oldest of five. They have um, two brothers, Danny and Adam, who are both officers. Danny was actually sheriff of the Hesperia Police Department, and he died three months after my mom of a massive heart attack. My uncle Adam uh, was in the service as well as a sheriff, and he actually just retired a couple years ago. Um, exemplary human beings. Like they are just upstanding citizens. They've risked their lives. Anyway, my nabby says, Sarah, I love you. So they're talking about defunding the police department. 
Um, my question is, why not use the money for training our police how to better handle situations without conflict? Maybe decreasing their work hours, huge point. Um, demanding a monthly retreat to go over and share their stress with other officers, etc. How much support do they really get within their own workplace? Uncle Dan and Adam were exemplary officers, risked their own life to save others, even after a heart attack. I will wait to hear the answers. I want to just touch on that really quick. Um, you know, we are all very large advocates for mental health. Right. Honest to fucking God, I do not believe any human being is born evil. I think that shit happens. It's nature versus nurture. Um, I, honestly, when you really put it into perspective, it is a fucked up job. It's a hard job. Do they need to handle things in that situation? No, but I mean, you have to think taking somebody's life for me, if I was an officer and if I shot somebody, I, it wouldn't be okay with me. They eventually become jaded, I guess. But I mean, why don't we? And then the, another question that comes to mind, sorry, I'm jumping around ADD. Um, this generation, these younger kids, you know, just newly adults are going to be raising children how they see fit, not to say that that's good or bad, but what's gonna happen when they are against all the police officers these kids aren't going to want to be cops growing up. You know what I mean? And what happens then? Are we going to have, like, are the ones who are bad going to become cops to be on the top of the gangster side? Or are we going to have children that we can raise to say, you know what, fuck this. Everything is, is not okay. And to raise better officers. And yes, I do think that there needs to be a huge fucking reform. They should be tested at least two, three times a year to make sure that there is no angst there. You know, um, you know, cameras, live streaming. Malcolm, that was an amazing fucking point. Like, it should be, you can log onto the computer and check any, Anyone? I don't know, what are they called, sanctions? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then if you know the officer's number, blip. Yeah. Yeah. I, and you I should think, be able to I go back, you'd be able to go back and scroll back through his, through his day, through his week, and I check think. any mm -hmm. sort of points of of where he interacted with civilians and you can pinpoint if you can find a problem there you know even if uh, if there wasn't something serious or anything you can still kind of get a look at him how he conducts himself uh, right how he looks dealing with people little quirks In general. right mm -hmm. uh, you get a psychologist to analyze the video and, and you know like a forensic type of situation where you can and that could be create more jobs somebody who sits there and has a monitor and monitors exactly. five to six officers and if they have something going down like okay that's not part of their job really so, yep red light right here bam other officers go get his ass right now because a couple of sessions of, of, of psychiatric assessment yes yes off with pay or without pay you know that type of thing well, but they need to be think it needs to be caught right away and also yes a reform that needs to happen within the police of our yes. uh, of our, our society right now it's 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 about it has nothing to do with protect and serve and that's what it's about <laughs> they're not serving servicing us whatsoever and they sure as fuck aren't protecting they feel, they, they, feel they, they, just, they, they feel against us. Just like when, when, when I see a police officer driving down the fucking road and he doesn't fucking use his signal sign. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but you are still a law-abiding citizen as well. Yeah. When he runs a red light just because he feels he needs to get somewhere just a little bit faster, whether it's for his job, right? Mm -hmm. Right? No. Or, or speeding by you. Or speeding by me, going more than, going more than the speed limit. Mm -hmm. Or on their phones. Or when they're I see a lot of them. Phones. Yeah. You know, you're yes. still a law-abiding citizen. That's the thing. Is that you're still a law-abiding citizen. You're not above the law either. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. You're just enforcing portions of the law that you can enforce. Yeah. Right. So there needs to be an absolute, complete reform mm -hmm. yes. from the Huge. way people are being trained. Yeah. You need to be trained in culture. You need to be trained in ethics, and you need to be trained in morals. Yes. And then you mm -hmm. have to take a fucking psychology, a psychological exam so that you understand the point that you are. Yeah, yeah. They do take exams, though. I will kind of just butt in there. My yeah, nephew. You know, but but they, it needs to be tweaked. Maybe the ultimate. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And it, and it needs to be 
a lot more. Un, unbiased, unstreamlined, if that's what they're doing. You know, if they're just kind of like pushing these guys through. Yeah. You, know, you need to be more detailed. I Take read, your time. I read something interesting um, the other day, and it was like the hours required to become an officer is like dwarfed by the hours it's required to become an official baker. Almost double. So the hours required wow. for training for becoming an officer, I believe it was in a city, it was like 880. Mm-hmm. And then the hours required to become like an official baker, Red Seal baker. was 1,500. Oh, fuck. So, like, so there's, there's so just parents, that's ridiculous. Is more than the that is laughable. Let me just say this. In Canada, in BC, to become a Red Seal journeyman electrician, which I am, it took me 6,000 hours. Exactly. It should be hard. It's the same here. An officer. Like, yes. you see, they see the worst in humanity. Mental health needs to be, like, a bigger proportion. Top. With it. Top. Because they, they, you know, in fact, they do see the worst in it. Yeah. They're, they're, they respond to a scene when, like, you know, a horrific crash happens. Exactly. Or, you know, they answer a call to a domestic abuse and you know they see whatever it is i don't want to delve into it because it's it's a big thing but and it's a big thing but like they see that sort of shit they need to get you know evaluated they need to they need to be better they need to be be briefed as well they, they need they need to be they need to have a system of true debriefing Yes. You yep. know, they're, like you were saying, your aunt was saying about a retreat. They need something. They need something to absolutely something to, to decompress, to be with other officers that understand oh, them. This, Especially. Oh, sorry. sorry go ahead. <laughs> I'm just, just throw this out there really quick. As, as um, we are also speaking from a layman's position, we don't. True. We don't know. We don't know this what they're going system, through, no. or uh, yeah. we're, we're, a lot of this is speculation. Yeah. But it feels like we're on the right track. Yeah. See. So is see, there I mean, we're having a discussion about yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. And like, like, like to, to, be, to be honest, I, I, I'm coming from the point of view of a frontline yeah. emergency person because yeah. that's yeah. what I was. Yeah. I was a fucking paramedic. Yeah. Coming from that perspective, the people that deal with tragedy like that, they debrief. They they have to yeah. go through all this to to get right again. Right. So right. Like, work. And you know, we know that cops yeah. do go through that. Yeah. If they if they have to uh, open fire, if they even pull their pistol, yeah. they do debrief. For yeah. That. I know that. Much. Yeah. yeah. I know that much yeah. as well. Right. And I I think it just needs to be I think it just needs to be more of a um, a more of an uncomfortable thing for that to happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, you know, when you get in a comfort zone where you just repeat the same fucking answers. You become jaded. Exactly. Or you uh-huh. become you become just numb. numb. It becomes robotic. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like, so it, it needs to be an uncomfortable situation again. Mm-hmm. You know, it has to be like a, almost like a rebirth. Yeah. yeah. That has to occur all over again. You know, it's really fucked up. Like, what if, what if, uh, like when something traumatic like that happens to to, to a civilian, it, it, it changes them on a chemical level, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. How many? How many? Cops. Uh, how many cops do you think have had something so traumatic happen to them that it it altered them chemically? And then, you know, like how fucked up would it be? Like if there's actually cops out there that would be like a serial killer, right? You know? Yeah, like they're killing right. someone. Oh, definitely. Not to well, mention. I just <laughs> gotta look at like, yourself when traumatic <laughs> yeah. shit happens to you. Yeah. What happens to you? Yeah. Like, I mean, for example, I got jumped once on the street, and I mean, it was at night, and I was alone, and it was like on the overpass in Paris, but like I knew but it's not going to happen all the time at night when you're walking but to me i'm like i don't want to go out i don't want to go out at night alone even though i know it was an isolated incident i'm irrationally afraid well maybe not irrationally but I, i'm afraid it would happen again even though the likelihood of it is happening again it's pretty low you're traumatized so yeah. like that needs to I'm sure that happens with officers where they oh, yeah. come into, you know, a shitty situation and they're like scarred by it or whatever. They need to like so 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 it needs so, to change. So being so so being of the voice for that advocate that you're speaking of. Mm-hmm. What if 
these officers that we're talking about who are who are shooting first and asking questions later mm-hmm. what if they've have lived through several different instances mm-hmm. where now they're just completely a fucking afraid so when this yeah. instance happens and they have mm-hmm. to go do their job this is what happened right yeah. so there was one there was one particular story that that, I, that we're referring to where this gentleman went into a, a white lady's home which he thought she had a weapon mm-hmm. so he went and fired mm-hmm. And he said it himself. He said, I was scared. Yeah. So he, yeah, because they just think the worst is going to happen because they've got PTSD, which is a huge deal. So, yeah. This is yeah. the, the cycle. The cycle of a police officer should really be looked at. Yeah. yeah. Right. Agreed. The cycle of a police officer. I think that the long term, the longevity of something, it's like it's like an underwater welder. Mm-hmm. Right. The longer you are, the less you're likely to live into your 60s, 70s, and 80s. Yeah, any right? Absolutely. Any welder. They can pull that they breathe. Right? Yeah. Or, or like, I guess you. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. So I'm, I'm thinking the same idea should be for police officers. If a police officer is living through several different traumatic situations, right, they should be taken care of. I believe they should Agree. be. Agree. It might be, human beings. It might be human time beings. for them to back off, you know, and put the badge down for a while or exactly. something. You know? Exactly. Exactly. Right. Or go sit at a what, desk. What is or, the shelf life of an exactly. RCMP officer? Yeah. That is such a good point. What is the shelf life of an officer? And you know what? I think that we should branch out on that maybe later. We can do some research and stuff and see if there's been any, like, I don't know, case studies. Um, but I also wanted to say, too, and just kind of go on that, I don't believe somebody comes becomes an officer of the law to be an asshole. But how do they develop that asshole? Yes, it is power. But is it the cops that they're following along that they're teaching their their predecessors all this shit? Like, hey, that's not how we do things. And a lot like our military, it's camaraderie. You don't narc on one of your own, you know what I mean? Or else there'll be there'll be hazings and yeah. We've all, Malcolm, I think you said it too. We've all been trained almost our whole life to just keep our mouths shut. Yeah, don't stick your neck out to it. Yeah, because it's if one for yourself and nobody for everybody else. Yeah. And that I think is where another reform should should be is I don't think the oldest officers who have been on the beat or whatever for 10 15 years should get these new bloods because they're teaching them all the bad habits exactly that have come up and how to handle things and i mean these cops they want to look like you know awesome people because they've they've been cops for so long they've had so much tragedy they got to go home maybe they have shit happening at home maybe their their marriage is falling apart maybe they lost a child maybe i don't know especially with this fucking COVID shit, officers cannot go home and see their children because they're in contact with the public every day and you don't know what the fuck they have. So that's, again, not seeing your family for an extended period of time, that has got to have huge, huge repercussions on the human psyche. So there's so much to be done. I couldn't agree with you more, Neil. There needs to be way more fucking time being trained on how to really interact with these people and you never know what's going to fucking happen again the body cams live streaming there's so many things that we can do to help our officers that will also by the same extent help our people it doesn't have to be a war anymore this you know, system is, will go a long way towards like anti yeah like yes i mean it's a- I'm not expecting racism to be ended in our lifetime because like you mentioned, if we have older officers, like if mm-hmm. we're giving old new blood to older officers, they're gonna instill their beliefs in them. And I believe yeah. that like yeah. at the moment, I mean, for those fucks that are racist that are stubborn in it, there's almost no changing no, them there's at no, all. Not so change. we just have there's to no wait. Change. Unfortunately, we'll have to wait like a few generations before like we come into you know a good step in progression and it almost seemed like we were in a great step like a decade ago when we well not not us here in canada but when this in the u.s they elected a black president right oh yes that was huge i remember watching it on the tv and thinking holy shit it just felt 
it, it, I didn't even know a lot about politics back then because I was like, oh, fuck it, whatever. I was like, I still had, I was first time mom, very young. And it was mind blowing to see this, this person of color standing there and speaking as strongly as he did. I don't give a fuck what everybody has to say about Obama as an American citizen. I do not hate Obama because I feel that he did what he felt was the best he could do. Being the president, the commander in chief cannot be an easy job, especially with all this fucking speculation. You have people behind you, 20,000 people screaming in your ear. No, don't do that again. These people who are in office for, for the Senate and shit, for the Chamber of Commerce, for what, 16 years, they make a political career out of it? That's bullshit because A, they're going to influence all the new guys that are coming in, even the president. Yeah. And there needs to be more seats, a more diverse outlook on things. Men, women, people of color, white people, just the whole <laughs> fucking spiel. This That's is, the uh, thing. There's a this lot of pa parallels between that and uh, from my own experience as a, as a tradesman uh, and, and a parallel to police officers in that the older guys got the bad habits, they're complacent, yep. they're not safe, mm -hmm. and the new blood comes in, right? A new, you know, a new apprentice comes in, and then he he's indentured to a journeyman and the journeyman passes off all his bad habits to him, teaches him how to be lazy and how to slack, how to cut corners. So that when that apprentice becomes a journeyman, now he's got all these bad habits already. Yep. The shitty journeyman right out of the gates. And they're not held accountable for those bad fucking habits. Just get the work done. We don't care how you do it. Just get it done as safely as possible. And then it's like, what's going to happen when this guy fucks up and he takes everyone down with him? Exactly. So, and it's it's like, uh, well, the, the, the cop thing, too. Uh, there was a movie that came out 19 years ago, which is it served as like a warning. It was called Training Day. Mm -hmm. exactly. mm. Denzel Washington's, you know, he's a veteran cop. Mm -hmm. right? He takes on the new kid and he's passing all these bad habits on to him. But the new kid is so strong and so resilient that he he, he doesn't. Uh, yeah, he comes mm -hmm. out on top. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So not that's everybody. not everybody, unfortunately. Yeah. I, you know, I mean, that's a, that's a moral perspective that. You know, Obama came into into office, you know, full of piss and vinegar. He came out swinging. He wanted to make a change. He was very eloquent in his speeches. He had the best intentions. But everybody around him that was already in that office got their claws into him. They drug him down, mm -hmm. you know. I, I believe the politi politician. Yeah, I believe yep. that, that whole system is just corrupt. And exactly. Needs to the be system reworked. needs to be changed. Yes. yes. All these systems need to be reworked. Yeah. Absolutely. Just to... You know, reiterate to our audience here, we're not condoning the bad apples right now. We Absolutely not fucking not. Out. We want to make law enforcement better for everybody else. We want to make it so that, and we're just discussing, you know, we're, we're shooting out of our ass with it, but like we're normal civilians talking about what we think the law, what law enforcement can do better so that everybody will not be afraid of them. Exactly. Right. Because that, Absolutely. Unless you're a criminal, unless you're, con you know, committing... And then you should be afraid. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. if you're not, you, you should be, be. You should be fine. You should feel yeah. safe. Yeah. You, you should feel, you should yeah. feel, you should feel like you should feel when you feel around your parents. When you, when you see that red and blue lights flashing, you should be, you should... Dude, be, yes. Yeah. Now, I yeah. am yeah. so law-abiding. And I see red and white light or red and blue lights, and I'm like, holy fuck! It's an immediate panic attack because of everything else that I've been through. Right. It just it, 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 it just brings you to, oh, am I gonna get shot today? Yeah. I think Not too, for I, me. we don't want to be the kind of people who share memes all day and say whatever and have opinions without um, thinking of how those um, how things should change. How can we fix it? How yeah. can we start mm -hmm. a conversation? that leads to change and yeah. I really think that that's really important for us to not just say whatever and be you know hey. online warriors or whatever Condemn it. keyboard warriors yeah and keyboard know. warriors going out and trying to make change and instilling change in our children and our students and the mm -hmm. people we speak and talk to every day and living a life that represents a change I think that that's so much more important than having strong words about opinions you know it's it's we need to, we really need to move forward. And like, you know, we want to know what, what are these officers going through? How is it being, how is it being worked on? 
how mm-hmm. what happens i i really do i have i have a friend who is um who is in the sheriff's department i i really want to find out from him like what's being done for your mental stability so that you are what do they do for you to make sure that when you go home you are you keeping okay. up your family yeah. is your wife happy or your kids happy are you being a good dad are you a good husband are you a good person like you seem like you are what's being done to make sure you stay that way in yes. the long run? he hasn't been in the sheriff's department for very long he's pretty new it's been a few years I want to know what happens and what what are we going to do and are they saying anything what's going to be the new new thing you know right you know and i i told him too i sent him a message and i was like i said hey doll i just want to let you know that you know you're you're in my heart and we're thinking about you and i hope you're safe and i hope everything is okay i know i just wanted to reach out and just because of course you know he's on the other side of it and i want to yes. i want to know i'm curious because he's like family right. so there's that but I, I think that we should try to reach out to these people and find out. I think we should look online or do whatever we can to see what does to support. Mm-hmm. But I think the cam situation is legit. Like because of your that family. information be, should be sent somewhere. Then they're accountable. Yeah, I think the accountability is major. Accountability is, I think, at this point, is the probably most important part about this whole thing. Yeah, is that everybody's going to be accountable for their action, mm-hmm. reaction, yeah, whatever they're doing. They need to be held accountable yeah. for it. I think that this anger and this rage and this sadness, because it is, it's, it's, it's heartbreak and it's sadness and it's turned into rage and anger and it's overflowing. It's, it was a volcano that was not alive or brewing for a while and it's just Long time. exploded and it's needed and it's yeah. happening and I think everybody needs to take a good, long, hard look at what made this happen and change this fucking story. Yeah, True I enough. think it's like, it's like a grieving process. Yeah. I think it's all, it's all like a absolutely. Process. That's such a good, I think, I think analogy. Each, group yeah. of, each culture, each group of people, yeah. they're all experiencing different Grease. levels of oh, this, this process. process. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so we're all steel. And then, and then it, <laughs> the thing is that it's going to cycle and recycle and cycle and recycle right. and cycle and recycle, right? And I think catching it at the right stages for reform is what we need to do right you know having these conversations having these conversations conversations, sharing your conversations about this letting people talk and letting people express themselves so we can hear and listen like what sarah said it's important that we listen and feel and figure out you know maybe we're not all the same but we can figure out how to live a better life together and the youth too is such a huge deal like i'm hoping what at bare minimum we get from this is these young people who care about the black lives matter movement who care about the officers i mean they don't even really have to care about the officers but they want change i'm hoping and don't quote me on this because i know we all have our views on politics and voting that just to be inspired to go to city council meetings. It starts in your city. It starts at home. And then- Not just talking, but acting. Yes, actions speak louder than words. And I I can't say that enough because we're all, you know, old enough to know that if you see something being done, you could talk about it, but be about it. Go to your city council meetings, sit in. It doesn't matter if you don't know shit, sit in the back with a dictionary become part of your city and then if it's something larger maybe if your city is able to hear your point if you're able to just see different points of views then you can take it a step farther for a county thing and then after the county, i mean that's here in the states i know you guys are like a whole nother box of worms but it's the youth that is coming in all these racist bigots i'm hoping will just kind of die off soon but they have to stop teaching their youth. Me, like I said, growing up around somebody racist, it was like one day I met a girl who was black and I just fell in love with her. She was just so charismatic. She was fun. She became my best friend. I grew up around, you know, Mexican families. They treated me like their own. So being nice to people, even if they are racist bigots, showing them that you are a person who has the same flesh, has the same blood and the same heart that they do and the same mind. 
that you guys want just goodness for each other, I think is when you change the world. People say it all the time, but really act it. I was changed from my views as a very young child, very early on, I saw that they were wrong because I gave somebody a chance because I listened to her because her family was just so warm and inviting that like, it's very, very hard to hate somebody when they're fucking cool and when they're nice. So when you're nice, you prove all the other bastards wrong. Again, it's the same thing with the cops. Like, hey, I know you guys are just doing your job. You're doing kind of a shitty job at it. So we need to back up a little bit. But why is, why is that happening? Why are they having a lot of um, just anger and just disgusting, just gross kind of... From the get. Yeah. Yes. How about if I ask you a question as a law-abiding citizen, you just answer my question. Yeah. Okay. I think you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. Don't, don't 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 be like, hey, because I'm the law, you have to do what I tell you. No, just hey, I asked you a very simple question. Hey, man, I'm just why, doing my why, job. Why, you know. No, no, no. Why'd you pull me over? Mm-hmm. Okay. I am not slurring, and I did not drink. Yeah. Why did they get so defensive? Why'd you, why'd you get so defensive as soon yeah. as I asked you why you pulled me over? Yeah. Answer mm-hmm. my question. Very simple. Wasn't rude about it. I have the right to know. So tell me. Oh, I pulled you over because of this and this and this. And I'd be like, oh, okay. Well, here's my license and here's my registration. Thank you very much for having making this situation that is an uncomfortable situation. Yes. Just a little bit more pleasant. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How, about, how about you just answer my question as 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 a, as a civilian? Human. Uh, yes. My mm-hmm. hands are on the dash. My hands are on the steering wheel. There's no reason for you to go for your gun. They know we're nervous when they pull us over. They know when we saw they see those fucking lights. It's okay. This is scary, guys. Just relax. I was hauling ass one day, hauling fucking ass. I'm not even gonna tell you guys how fast because it's not good. I had my <laughs> son in the back. I know I suck. I was really late because I'm late everywhere I go. And a cop, whoop, whoop. I was like, fuck. I didn't try to like slow down. Nope. I pulled over. He came over and said, thank you for pulling over and making this, you know, short and sweet. He said, license registration. I gave it to him. My son's in the back crying because he thinks I'm going to go to jail. And I'm like, I don't think I'm, I am. The guy came that. back. Yeah. The guy came back, handed me my shit, said, okay, here's your ticket. I said, thank you, sir. Have a good day. He goes, you too. It was very professional. I mean, it, it, there's also been times where I think I've told you guys back, back, way, way back, family that's listening so far back. I was in possession of an illegal substance. I'm not going to say which one because that doesn't matter. Um, and I had a tail light out. So when the, you could not imagine, I mean, you can, but the amount of anxiety that I fucking had, I'm like, oh my God, this is it. I'm going down. Holy fuck. Pulled me over for a broken tail light. He was like, do you know why I pulled you over? And I said, no, I do not. <laughs> They know we're nervous. So he's like, you have a broken taillight. Let me see your registration. Gave him all that shit. Came back and said, you know what? I'm going to give you a warning this time because Fuck you're up. very young. Because you're very young. Now, don't I don't know. I Maybe it's because I'm a woman. Maybe it's because I'm white. I don't fucking know. The guy looked like he was Hispanic, but I can't say that because I don't fucking know. But he said, I'm going to let you off with the warning. Just it was a fix it ticket. Please just go change the light bulb. He told me you can go to AutoZone. And I was like, yes, sir. It was very, but let me tell you, I didn't move that vehicle until he left. Like I sat there and waited for him to pass me. And then I got off that freeway exit right then and there. And I had to call somebody smoke a cigarette and calm down because for me, that was insane. He gets out of his car, comes over to you. You guys, I wouldn't be here right now. <laughs> There's something else. You have drugs. And then you're like, so, no. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> that that was my most recent one, right? All right, I was in somebody else's vehicle, and we were about to take me home, right? And we were about to Neil. 20 minutes out of town, right? And I'm driving along. I see this police officer. I'm on cruise control, and I'm not even going 10 kilometers. Uh, I don't know what that is in reference. I know. I'm like, huh? <laughs> I don't six know. Miles. Six miles six over miles. the speed limit? So, yeah, You're I'm not like, going fast. <laughs> No, I'm going speed limit exactly. Speed probably a little fast. bit, probably a little slower. <laughs> speed right? limit plus. I, I, I don't know. But I was going speed limit on cruise control. And I drive by this cop and I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Just because I saw a cop. Yeah. No yep. fucking reason whatsoever to feel this way. You were hanging out. No, I didn't. I'm not fucking breaking any laws. I'm not a criminal. And I, and, and I was like, I see a cop and I'm like, oh, fuck. And as soon as I fucking thought that, 
And just like a couple minutes, just not even like a minute down the road, I see the lights come on. And I'm like, mother fuck. Right? And I'm like, I'm not speeding. I wasn't fucking swerving all over the fucking road. So I'm not fucking intoxicated. I'm like, why is this motherfucker fucking got his lights on and kept chasing me down? Especially considering other people's speed a lot faster. Exactly. Yeah. So then so then I'm driving along, I'm driving along, and then I'm like, you know, I'm not I I don't pull over right away because we're on a blind corner. Mm -hmm. And I'm more conscious than this cop. And I go and pull up into a straight edge. Like a straight straight away. (laughs) And then I pull over. So then he pulls over and he he tells me why roll, roll my window down. And I, I do as he asks. And then he's like, then he asked me why it took me so long to pull over. And I told him that I didn't want to pull over on a corner. Hmm. And then he was like, oh, okay. I remember that. <laughs> and then uh, right then and there, he was like, all right, well, I'm going to be dealing with a fucking smart ass. I'm assuming because I did that. Mm-hmm. Right? Because I'm like thinking more consciously about the situation than he fucking obviously was. Right. Right, a lot so of traffic on this and highway. Yeah, too. yeah, it's a lot of traffic today. We, well, at that time, because it was quitting time, and we have a lot of fucking workers leaving to go home uh, that leave this town to go home. So, anyways, he asks for my license, and then he asks for my insurance, and I told him right up front, I'm like, I'm sorry, officer, I'm not too sure exactly where the insurance is. I'm pretty sure it's in the glove box, like most places, but this vehicle isn't mine. I'm boring this vehicle. And he's like, all right, well, if you could find that, please. And then I looked at him, I'm like, and I do have another question. Could you tell me why you pulled me over? And he didn't. And then he didn't. <laughs> he got upset. And he got annoyed with me. And because you were questioning his authority. His voice changed. Yes. Yeah. And, then, and then he was like, I asked you mm-hmm. to show me your license and your insurance. And then I said, okay, I can do that but you still have to tell me why you pulled me over. And then he repeated himself again. So I was like, all right, fine. I, pull, I already had my I already had my license out already. And then we rummaged around in the fucking glove box to find the insurance. So needless to say, we got pulled over because of the lack of insurance. And I didn't know that. Yeah, it was like yeah, a it was, it was, Yeah. It was like a, it was like it was a, a day off. It was one entire day off that the car, the vehicle had run out of insurance, and I had no clue. I thought we were good for another fucking week because that's what I was told from the person who I borrowed the vehicle from. Mm-hmm. Because that's what I'm like. I'm gonna make sure that I know and have all the information I need, so that if I do run into a situation, I can be in the right mm-hmm. and not get in fucking trouble. Right. So. So, needless to say, I hand all that shit over, and then he comes over and he tells me, he's like, all right, well, I pulled you over because there's your, your insurance has run out. And I was like, how did you catch that? I was, I was going 67, 60, 67, 66 miles per hour, so 100 kilometers. Mm-hmm. I was going speed limits. How do you catch that I didn't have any insurance on my vehicle? Right. So mm-hmm. what more than likely happened was he used a straighter gun, boop, boop, boop. Mm-hmm. Right? right. And then mm-hmm. saw the license and then ran the license and then noticed that the insurance was out. Mm-hmm. All right. Right. But mm-hmm. still, very simple question. Mm-hmm. And you didn't have to be a fucking dick about it. Right? No, absolutely not. You could have just been like, oh, you don't have insurance. And then I'd be like, why don't I have insurance? This isn't my vehicle. I apologize. Let me get a hold of the guy who's this vehicle is for and I'll talk to him. You can talk to him mm-hmm. because. I don't. I didn't know that. I was told that this car was insured. The license plate had the placard and the sticker on that said that this license that the, this car was insured. Yeah. Right. And it's not like the vehicle was stolen. You no. know, that's a small enough town that if somebody did a grand theft auto, it would have been found <laughs> out like <laughs> in five minutes. Yeah, they went that way. So, <laughs> so that's my thing. Like I said, there's a reform that needs to happen. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Your civilians like civilians. You need to treat them like you would treat your mother. Mm-hmm. You're 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 no better than I am. All you do mm-hmm. is enforce a law, and a law that's supposed to keep me safe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. So when Absolutely. I'm a fucking law-abiding citizen, it's there's no right for you just to be a dick. Yeah. So stop being just a dick just because you can. 
yeah. stop because just because we live in a society now where everybody fears fucking cops that you have the right to be a fucking asshole. Mm-hmm. Stop. That's the as a person though. That's his fuck up as a person. That's okay. not even a badge. I mean, the badge is probably amplifying it, but I personally just think that it's his fuck up as a person. Like, what's wrong with you, dude? Who peed in your Wheaties? Yeah. But that's the thing. It's <laughs> it's more than one situation. This happens all frequently. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. But this fucking table can tell us that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've, I've had a couple of times where I was pulled over. But, uh, it was uh, there were road checks for mm-hmm. for drunk drivers. And uh, a cop pulls over, comes up to me, asks for my license. So I pulled out, pull out my wallet, and I accidentally hand him my debit card. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that a couple of times where I accidentally hand a cop my debit card, and uh, they don't laugh. Uh, they don't find that funny. <laughs> <laughs> I get a chuckle out of it, but he's just kind of. You know, so yeah. I have a question. So yeah. uh, a bit of a preface for this here. Um, I know that there is a thing going around and the interpretation for it can be multiple ways. Um, I believe it's pronounced a cob where all cops are bastards or some people pronounce it as all cops are bad. But my question would be for the good cops, for the good one, for the good apples, is it better for them to stay on and try to make a difference so that when they get into a bigger position that they can presumably make a, a, a bigger difference or is it better for them to resign the system that is oppressing um people of color both so it's it's a, like there are good good cops out there yeah. um that are you know making a difference that aren't being dis- that aren't being discriminatory towards people of color or just people in general yeah is it like is it better for them to stay on and try to make the, that difference to try to be that positive light or is so. it better for them to leave that system that is corrupt corrupt i think the good cops need to stay in there man they need to show yeah. that, they're, that they have the, the gumption you know yeah. they, they they can last they can stand up to this I think if they take off then you know corruption wins yeah as much as they're outnumbered, yeah, mm-hmm. you gotta fight the fight. Right? Yep. If you're in the right, you have to fight it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And then you know what? This whole pulling you over because you're driving too perfect, which is something that Karina just told me. She got pulled over because she was driving too perfect, and uh, the cop asked if she had a driver's license, and she didn't. It was suspended just by chance. Um. So she reached her hand down to get it out of her purse, and it was, you know, shade dark. So she pulled her hand back and said, do you want me to get it for you? It's in my purse. And he shined his flashlight in there, automatically making her even more nervous. Like, oh my God, she's alone, a, a woman, like not being defensive or anything. She was scared and she did get a ticket. She was sober, but she didn't want to get pulled over on a Friday night because they, they're just looking. And, you know, people always say that they have their, their numbers yeah. to, uh, to meet by the end of the month. And is, I mean, that's true. You see them out just sitting there trying to make their quota. That's another thing. They should not have a quota. No, you you should not be able to pull me over because I was driving too perfect. Thank you. Even if they did run your plates, just like they did yours, Chris. And they were like, Oh, this asshole's got, you know, expired insurance. It's like, how long do they drive behind you? I mean, I get the whole random pick, but he should tell you, I ran your plates and I noticed that you had an inspired license. Don't lie. Don't start this relationship off in a, a shitty manner just because. Is that, oh, yeah. Oh, no. We just lost her. Oh, oh. Oh, we hear her. Yeah, I think. We hear her. Uh-huh. Oh, hi. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> and her mom had always told her to mind the cops. And she looks white. She does. Very white. Um she her case was thrown out since he didn't have probable cause that's another thing i guess that we can get into a little later because i know it is quite late and um we have been on for like what two hours so. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> shante is turning into a pumpkin yeah dude i gotta be up before the sun okay let's wrap it up there wow Anything else here we want to touch on? Well, in our I usual, just want to say, you guys, this sort of... was an amazing episode, and I can't yeah. wait to 
explain, like in the in mm-hmm. the information explaining this episode, so everybody can come back and watch it. Right. And yeah. people who didn't who missed it and stuff, because that that Ty Lab story was amazing. Wow. Yes, that you. was really cool that he came up. I'm so glad that he was able to make it because I know that we had a couple of people that weren't able to make it, but yeah. it, just to hear a story from another world. Yeah. It's yeah, important. It's important. We can usually yes. end this. You know, this could be a part, part one, one. Part, part, part two. So. You know, yeah. I agree. Maybe we will have a part two yeah, to see how everything plays out. Yeah, Plus, we also. had a lot of listeners too that had, yeah. to had to leave because it was just getting late for them too. Yes. So people are going to come back and listen to this episode, and I feel like we should make yeah. it a part two so that we can have some more stories. I would I love it. More perceptions and more stories is going to create a lot more conversation, and it's good. Yeah. I, I also just want to put it out there, like. I'm not going to remove any friends who have different opinions from me. I believe in personal growth after receiving new information. Amen. Yep. So, I mean, to any of my friends listening, if you have a different view from me, I'm not going to remove you. I'm exactly. Those you type of people. Yeah. That's like, true. That goes for all of us. And yeah. everybody goes to the growth. Oh, and definitely. I feel like um, if you're at least educating yourself, in the struggles of people of color or um even you know just to listen to their story and say that was fucked up that's enough to understand better yeah i've I've had a guy remove me from his friend list because of difference of opinion and you know whatever what are you gonna do that's on them though me personally i'm with neil if you have a different opinion because all you've had to go off of was cops being just unruly and brutal we would love to hear from you but i'm not gonna unfriend you because you have this view that i don't share right okay it's really late oh shante is not here to rattle off that good shit let's see if we can remember some of this um if you want to email us drop us an email at uh f this network at gmail.com um <laughs> Check it we'll post it in the comments. <laughs> one of us, we're all on Facebook. You know our names. You know who we are. Drop a message in there. Um, yep. We are on Instagram. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure what the address is. I think it's F this account. Yeah. Uh, we are on Twitter. F account. Uh, F account. At F account on Twitter. Yeah. We're on YouTube. F this network on YouTube. You can watch all the videos for all the podcasts. Uh, not all of them, but the ones that we do video. Uh, we're on Spotify. We're on Apple Music. On the F this network. Check us out. All right. And feel free to share with your friends too. If you're like, hey, we were just talking about this the other day, just pop them on. And for those of you who have just come in late, maybe catching the ass end of the show, I would really recommend going back. I know it's a long fucking show. Two hours is a long time. Don't be afraid to pause it, comment a little bit, and then come back to it later. Because if you do have a story, we, I mean, I, we cannot say this enough. I must have shared this fucking feed like 20,000 times. People are probably on my feed like, damn it, where's her means? <coughs> Excuse me. We just scratched the surface too. I'm sure we can <coughs> hours and hours on the subject. Me. But like, I mean, <coughs> let us know. We'll yeah. make, if, if we get enough feedback, we could probably do another episode like yeah. fairly quick here. I would yeah. like to get those other two uh, speakers on in the future. Just, yeah, that would be nice. Because they had good stories. They gave me a little bit of uh, the cliff notes uh, in uh, message form, and I'm really interested in hearing this. And, you know, one of them we know personally, and he's got good stories for days. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and that would be an interesting thing to hear from your guys' Canadian side, too. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One, one, of, one of the guys is from uh, Nevada. Yeah. Was it Nevada? Nevada. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's Nevada. Yeah. All right. No, no we, Nebraska. He's Nebraska. from, Nebraska. yeah, Lincoln, Nebraska. Lincoln, Nebraska, yeah. He's originally from San Diego. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. So, thank you for tuning in. Yes. Uh, thank you for your input. Thank we you. We hope that you would uh, join us in the future and be more interactive. Feel free to copy the meeting ID and the password and get in on this uh, meeting. Yes. All um, right. That was, yeah, I just want to, like, personally say thank you for everybody who, who showed up. Yeah. Thank you. Um, mm-hmm. you know, Willie, Willie, Willie P. It was ooh, Thanks fucking for amazing. Sharing your story. Yeah. yeah. Um, Shante for sitting next to me, you know, for my brothers here at the other table, you know, and then for Sarah from, you know, almost a world away, but it's still here. Right. All right. All right. Okay. okay. So, uh, 
uh, from all of us here at F this network. Stay safe. Um, Dev. Milios. Sarah. Oh, <laughs> Sarah, who's here, but not here. Okay, <laughs> who isn't here? Yeah, Shantae's over here. <clears throat> and Shantae. Thank you, and good night. All right. Good night. Be safe.